So, I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then, please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it. Also, by doing this, you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel. Then, don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section. Hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too. You were blessed son. Stay blessed. I love you Jesus I worship and adore you I just want to tell you that I love you time from the depths of your heart you're speaking to a living person I love you Jesus I worship and adore you I just want to tell you that I love you more than anything for the last time now I like your heart to be in this song I love you Jesus Just want to tell you that I love you more than anything. Yes, Lord, we love you. Oh, this is why we're here. We love you. We love you. It's a language our spirits have come to terms with. We love you. There are many things that we feel about you. We appreciate you. We thank you. But most of all, we love you. We love you. I just want to tell you that I love you more than anything. That's the part I want you to think about more than anything. Is that true? I just want to tell you. I know you love him, but how much do you do? There's a song the worship team sang one time. I hope you still can remember. Is it more than anything? Is that true? More than anything. Just speaking it in my spirit. Go ahead and sing. Just lift your hands and love him tonight. It's a very simple song. If you cannot sing it, you can express your heart by the lifting up of your hands. More than air. Oh, hallelujah. We love you. We love your presence. We love your word. We love everything about you. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. More than anything. I lay it all down again To hear you say that I'm your friend I lay everything down You are my desire You are my desire No one, nothing else will do Sing it For nothing else can take your place in my life. For nothing else can take your place. To feel the warmth of your embrace. To feel the warmth of your embrace. Lord, when I'm confused, help me find that way that leads to your presence. And then bring me back to you. Oh, 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 oh,
makes it look like you are far just help me know that you are near that you express your love to him Lord I love you you're a real person you're not a thing you are a real person I love you I thank you I appreciate you I will serve you but I love you there remain at this three faith hope and love but the Bible says the greatest the greatest again to know and follow hard after you just let me do my crazy thing on the stage we'll soon sit down your disciple and something that's the part I like now this world is empty pale and poor compared to knowing you my Lord lead me on and I will Come on, sing, lead me on and I'll run up to you. Lead me on and I will. depend on you like the fish depends on water like man depends on air we depend on you you're not one of the many important things in our lives you are everything you are all we acknowledge you we acknowledge you your word tells us that in all our ways that we acknowledge you and Lord we acknowledge you but much more than our acknowledgement we love you we love you we have an affinity towards you that we cannot control we love you we have a desire towards your life and the things of the spirit hallelujah hallelujah Praise the Lord. See, when you think about the things that the Lord has done in your life, you will find a reason to truly love Him. Hallelujah. I think a lot about the hand of God upon my life. I'll be a fool to credit everything God has done to my prayer life. I'll be a fool to credit everything to my study or fasting and all of that. Thank God for these things. But God has given much, much more than I will ever ask. So sometimes when I begin to worship Him, you see, if you have not taken out time to count your blessings and to count the hand of God upon your life, it will be easy to complain. 
it will be easy to grumble it will be easy to see what you think God has not done it's only when you are alive you can think of money it's only when you are alive that you can think of exams I spoke with a lady this morning who came out from the ICU and um, lovely ambitious lady like every one of us praise the Lord had not slept for two days and her entire passion is not to get married not to get a job not to get money, not to find relevance, but to walk out of blood cancer. Blood cancer is medically a death sentence. That's cancer of the blood. Yet I spoke with this lady and she was rejoicing and hopeful, still believing that God can do many things. And then we come into a place where God has been so faithful to us. The Bible says, if the Lord had not been on our side, now may Israel say, Hallelujah. I love him from the depth of my heart. And I am deeply grateful. I'm not an ingrate. I study the dealings of God in my life. And I generously appreciate him. You never hear it from my mouth that I complain and grumble. And I say, Lord, why? Why didn't you give me tea? Why didn't you give me bread? Why didn't you give me a suit? Oh, I'm more than grateful. There are many things to be grateful about. Number one, I'm grateful because I know him. This has secured my eternal destiny. Number two, I know him because he has taught me his ways. He's taught me how to live. The word of God has given me wisdom. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, By me kings reign and princes decree justice. I love him because he has been faithful. Faithful. It's a quality that human beings hardly have. Faithfulness. The ability to stay true and to be consistent faithful never changing even when we change his nature refuses him from changing and he remains faithful he calls himself the faithful and the true God hallelujah God has been merciful to us no matter how stubborn you are in this place no matter how hardened you are you know that he has been faithful hallelujah he has been faithful Many of us look at what he's doing. I sat back and while um, our brother and his lovely wife were giving their testimony. You don't know how this, you don't know what these things do to me. It's easy to think that Joshua Selman is behind all of these things. And I thank God for being a channel. But can I tell you something? Like John said, there is one who is mightier than I. Hmm. He said he must increase that I am decrease in one minute I'd like you to lift both of your hands and at least remember two or three things God has done and tell him thank you blessed be the name of the Lord I thank you for life. Have you considered how many of your prayer requests have been granted? Lord, it was like a dream, but the pain is gone. It's like a dream, finally. I'm a graduate. The job has finally come. After many years, a man has finally come to propose to me. I give you praise. Lord, I give you praise. I never believed the genotype would change, but it's history. That which was a mountain yesterday has become my testimony. That which was a reason for my tears has become a reason for my joy. And I give you praise. 
Oh, how can I forget your faithfulness? Just bless him. Just love him and tell him how grateful you are. The situation would have killed you, but you're still alive. Still alive. When men concluded about you, when you even concluded about yourself, Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for being a faithful God. Hallelujah. I sing praises to your name. Lift your hands. Oh, God, praises to your name. Everything to me, you are everything to me, and I exalt your holy name. I exalt your
If you never do anything else, we are grateful. If you never do anything else. If you never do anything else, we are still grateful. We are still grateful. Hallelujah. I'd like us to thank God for just one thing before we sit down. I'd like you to pray and say, I see my life changing and Lord, I give you praise. Truly. If you're not changing, it's alright. You can just worship me. But I see my life changing. My goodness. My goodness. My goodness. My goodness. I see my life increasing in wisdom. Increasing in grace. Yes, Lord, you have been faithful. Yes, Lord, you have been faithful. I give you praise. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you and we love you. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. You're welcome. Please be seated. I welcome everyone once again, inside and outside. May God bless you. Again, let me remind us that we are sowing to the Spirit. A day of reward is coming. Hallelujah. It says, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, he will reap. The Bible encourages us and it says, let us not be weary in well-doing. Because weariness is part of the limitations of this body. We can be weary. But he said, let us not be weary in well-doing. He said, for we will reap in due season if we faint not. I told us last week, the word of the Lord that came to us, that we must be consistent. We must be consistent. The key to spiritual growth, the key to dexterity in the spirit, the key to commanding power with God is not just knowing what you should do, but staying there. Do it for as long as it will take until there is a manifestation. Hallelujah. Paul speaking to his son in the gospel, Timothy, he said, meditate on these things. Give yourself wholly Holy, not half-heartedly. Give yourself wholly to them. He said that thy profiting will appear unto all. I give you a guarantee. God is going somewhere with your life. You may not see where he's going. But I know that he's taking you somewhere. He'll lead you and guide you to the city of Papa. He'll lead you and guide you to your place of destiny. He'll lead you and guide you to the city up above. He'll lead you and guide you to your place of destiny. There is a place for every one of us in this life. There is a place for us in destiny. Hallelujah. And Job said there is a path that no fowl knoweth. Although it flies, but it has not been able to see that path. He said the whelps of the lion has not gotten there. These are paths that only the Lord by wisdom has crafted out for himself. And if we stay with God, he will lead us through that path. I choose to sow in the spirit. I choose to sow to the spirit. I choose to walk with the spirit. The Bible says, surely there is an end. Everyone say, surely there is an end. 
So says the Bible. Surely there is an end. And it says thine expectation shall not be cut short. There is an end. There is an end. Learning continues forever, but a time will come, learning will coincide with results. Manifestation. And for some of us, we are this close to new seasons of breakthrough, of grace. Continue the giving. Continue the fasting. Continue the prayer. Continue building capacity. God is building you this much because that which is coming upon you is mighty. So you must sustain the strength to carry it. Hallelujah. The Bible calls it the desire of nations. The desire. What nations long for. What people kill for. What people go to the devil for. The desire of nations. When God puts it upon your life, you become the desire of nations. May that be so in the name of Jesus Christ. Gaining spiritual stature, part three. We'll finish it up today. There's just very little to finish. And then we'll pray. I, I just sense that we are flying in the spirit. I just sense that there is a spiritual... How do I describe what I'm feeling now, oh God? I just sense that there is, there, is, there is an altitude in the spirit. Listen, I've been sensing this for a long time. That there is a height. There is a dimension in the spirit that God is taking us. It's so slow we are not noticing the shifts and the changes. Yet firm. Is lifting us. We are gaining wings. Wings that fly. A realm where certain challenges do not exist again. A realm of true liberty. The Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Hallelujah. We are soaring like the eagles. You may not see it. You may think you are still walking until he's done with you and he shows you the report card. You find out that you stopped walking a long time ago. You took on a flight in the spirit. Hallelujah. We said how that there are three kinds of men according to scripture in the first part of this series. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 2 verse 14 that there is one who is called the natural man. Hallelujah. And we agree that the natural man is one who is unregenerate, who is yet to encounter the Lord, the one you call a sinner, an unbeliever. Hallelujah. And the Bible tells us that he does not sustain the spiritual capacity to relate with spiritual things. He calls them foolishness. Because the quickening that must happen to his spirit man to begin to understand spiritual things has not yet happened. Hallelujah. The Bible says the gospel is the power of God that brings men unto salvation. And so he probably has not heard or acknowledged the lordship of Jesus Christ over his life. And as a result, he thinks purely sensually. His, his plane of interaction ends with his five senses. Hallelujah the victim of all that he has known and he does not acknowledge God. And we agreed and we saw that sadly the eternal destiny of such a man is the lake of fire. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And the Holy Spirit took us to another level as we began to pray and encourage ourselves and intercede for lost ones. And I hope that we are still um, passionate about souls. Daniel 12 tells us that they that be wise shall be like the firmaments of the heavens and they that turn many to righteousness like the brightness of the stars even forevermore. There is a reward for committing yourself to turn many to righteousness. Hallelujah. And last week we considered the second kind of man and we said is the carnal man. The carnal man. The word carnal there means sensual, worldly. 
sensual. Hallelujah. And we agree that the carnal man is saved. He has come to a point where he has met the Lord Jesus Christ. However, he is still a slave to the flesh and he is still a slave to its desires. He is still subject to the ways and the demands of the old man. So although he has given his life to Christ, his organ of understanding spiritual things have begun to be quickened, but he has not cooperated with the spirit. Hallelujah. He has not, he has refused to pay that price of alignment in the spirit. The price there is the price of spiritual alignment. To align himself so that he will come out of the grip of carnality. Hallelujah. And we said a few things that is, this is a very pathetic situation. We agreed that um, the issue with this nature is that it can rob the believer from experiencing the victory of the cross. Carnality is one of the reasons why many Christians see something in the Bible but it never becomes a reality over time in their life. And so they keep claiming it but there is not a manifestation because there are spiritual requirements to walk into the reality of this. One of the disasters of carnality is that it stops you, it robs you of experiencing the power of the cross, the saving power, the true freedom that the cross and the blood of Christ offers. Number two, we said that um, the believer in this condition will hardly experience sustained spiritual growth. Hallelujah. And this affects all kinds of people, preachers, ordinary people. You find out that today they are prayerful, tomorrow they are down. Today they are walking in holiness and righteousness, tomorrow they are down. Hallelujah. No sustained spiritual growth. It's a life of struggle. And so it's like you break through a path in the spirit. And after a while, you are down uh, to the dust again. Number three, we said that living a carnal life permits the operation demonic it gives access to demonic influences over the believer's life. While it is true that one who is saved cannot be possessed because the Holy Spirit lives in him. There is a union between his spirit and that of the spirit of God. There is, there is, there is a oneness. Hallelujah. However, his life, his faculty can be manipulated according to the counsel of darkness. And so although that man is born again, he may find himself being a victim of all kinds of things. It is at that realm where curses and yokes and spells and enchantments still exist. Praise the Lord. So although the person is born again and according to God's word, the Bible says you are a new creation in Christ. But he does not walk into the reality of that experience because flesh is the life of the dust. And Satan was told in Genesis that you will feed upon the dust. And so when that becomes your nature, you become accessible to demonic activities. Are we following? Verse 4, or sorry, point number 4. I said that in its worst state, the believer can fall out of grace and lose his salvation through idolatry and rebellion. I did disprove last time that the concept of once saved, forever saved is a fallacy. I'm sorry to say it. I wish it were not true. But it is the truth. The concept that once you are saved, you can do anything and nothing else changes it is not accurate. Hallelujah. I love those who brought this perspective to the body of Christ. I honor them. We honor their spiritual investments and that which they have brought to the body of Christ. But as we grow spiritually, there is need to adjust. I was speaking in a pastor's conference yesterday and I was telling them that one of the things we must sustain as men of God is the humility to adjust when greater light is open unto us. It is very embarrassing. There are many things I used to believe. I no longer believe them now. And there are many things I didn't used to believe. I probably would argue with them. But now they have become, they have been incorporated into my belief system. So realize that the life of a believer is a life of consistent repentance and alignment. This is, the, this is the symbol, it is the signature that characterizes spiritual growth. That occasionally you will be required to repent and align. The word repent is not an ungodly word. It's not a word for sinners. To repent means to turn from a perspective and begin to see from another view. So we will need to repent and align ourselves. 
please let it not embarrass you if in the course of your Christian experience you find the need to adjust. We all have at one point or the other believed certain things about God, about men, about ministry and as the word of God opens up, realize and place your pos yourself in a position where you'd say I am a student in the school of the spirit. Isaiah when he saw the Lord, he broke down. There was nothing embarrassing about it. There is still much more for us to see in the spirit. And so if we camp around this that has become our experience, then we may never grow. We must sustain the humility to keep aligning. That spiritual alignment is what opens up us to become um, uh, portals for, for kingdom activities. Just like Mike shared, he said, let it be done in the earth, in this body. That this body will become a gate where spiritual things can find expression. Hallelujah. And then the last point we looked at, the issue with the carnal nature is that it stops the believer from being a true lampstand and a written epistle in his territory of influence. The Bible tells us again and again that the church and the believer as an individual entity, that we are the light of the world, we are the salt of the earth. That means that our lives are supposed to be spiritual templates, mirrors, vistas for men to be able to see what God's life, that the reality of the divine life should be communicated accurately through our lives. But if we dwell in that realm of carnality, it can tamper with the quality of the, the, the reflection of Christ through us. So you find out that men will look at us but they will see darkly. We will not give an accurate representation. The word represent means to present him again. Represent. That we create an accurate portrait of what the divine life is. Hallelujah. I define the word carnal and I told us that to be carnal means to be sensual, to be ruled by factors and agencies other than the spirit. It doesn't just mean five senses alone. Every time you are ruled and controlled by an agency that is outside of the Holy Ghost, you are carnal. Hallelujah. Whatever is the name of that agency, if it is outside of the Holy Ghost, it is called carnality. So to be carnal is not just to be materialistic necessarily or to be ruled by your five human senses no that every time you subject yourself to an agency to influence and manipulate your life that is other than the spirit of god according to scripture you are called carnal are we blessed and i helped us to define the word flesh in this context and uh, i told us that flesh is not body they are interchanged in scripture like in Galatians 2.20, it talks about the flesh, but it means our mortal body. But flesh in this context has used when the Bible is talking about the man of the spirit and the man of the flesh. Flesh, I define it as the way of life. I love the definition. A way of life that is helplessly subject to the appetites, the lusts, and the desires of the old man. Helplessly subject this describes the experience of many believers in the body of Christ. We are, we are helplessly subject, seemingly. That's the reason why many believers cannot tame certain appetites of the flesh. Hallelujah. According to 1 John chapter 2 from verse 15 to 17, the Bible tells us, love not the world. We did examine that um, there are three dimensions of, of carnality and three levels of being ruled by the flesh. We said the first is the lust of the eyes. We talked about the word lust. Lust means an affinity for something. When the Bible says love not the world, it uses the Greek word eros and is the word lust to develop an ungodly affinity for a thing. Hallelujah. I told us that there are many words that are used. I'm just doing a quick recap for love hallelujah number one is is filio filio is earthly love 
the love between friends, husband and wife, the highest dimension of human love. Hallelujah. And then the Bible talks to us also that there is um, agape or agape. That's the love of God, love that is not of this realm. Hallelujah. And then the third level is eros. Eros is, is immoral love, love that is sponsored by lust, a demonic, ungodly, carnal affinity towards certain things. And the Bible says, love not the world. Remember the teaching? I'm emphasizing it because we can never have enough of it. Love not the world. The word is eros. Do not develop an ungodly affinity for this system. That means that there are many things in this world that can cause the believer to begin to develop an ungodly affinity. And the Bible categorizes them into three. The first is the lust of the what? The eyes. The lust of the eyes. An affinity that is sponsored by your vision. The things you can see creating an ungodly affinity. When you see a beautiful car, when you see a beautiful lady or a handsome guy, when you see a nice cloth, when you see all of these things, because of your eyes, if the Holy Spirit does not come to play a part to bring you out of that realm of carnality, you will find out that you become subject to an affinity that is beyond your power for such kinds of things. Are you following me now? Then the second is the lust of the flesh. An affinity that comes because of what your body wants. Food, immorality, and all kinds of things that are associated with the flesh. And I told us last week that it is good to pay attention to our bodies but not at the expense of our spiritual growth. Gluttony is one proof of carnality. An excessive um, uncontrollable affinity for food and this is um, among many other things uh, spiritual activities like fasting bring us to a place where food stays in its um, designated place in our lives and it doesn't go beyond the boundary hallelujah and then the cravings to satisfy our bodies through whatever means that's what has led people into acts like masturbation, acts like um, uh, pornography, and so on and so forth. The, the, that affinity to satisfy our body. Hallelujah. And then the Bible says the pride of life. That human desire to be in control outside of God. That human desire to receive earthly acknowledgement on grounds of our accolades and our fulfillment and achievements in life. It is a natural thing. Our natural disposition places us to be victims of this kind of nature. So we must be able to rise to a plane that is not natural. Hallelujah. Jesus. I told us that the ultimate sign of carnality is uncontrolled lust. The ultimate sign. You can look at your life now and know to what degree you have attained spiritual stature. There is no confusion about it. God gave us exact templates. So you can know right now, every one of you listening to me inside and outside, you can know right now whether you are carnal or spiritual and if spiritual to what degree you have been able to gain stature in the spirit the test is very simple uncontrolled lust every time your appetites rule over you you are carnal every time your desire rules over you you see let me tell you something everything god gave man he gave man control over it praise the lord when the things that god gave you control over begins to control you it is sponsored by another strength that is not natural the carnal realm is the realm of the flesh that's where strongholds that's where mindsets mentalities and I tell you, it's a, it's a great gate for demonic activities in the life of the believer. 
why are we taking this series because you see if we want god to do business with us we must rise to a point where we lose affinity for the things of the flesh hallelujah and that's going to be my my the path i'll take tonight um i told us that to become a spiritual man there are two things number one is death to the flesh romans 13 verse 14 and i define that to die to the flesh means to rise to a spiritual state where your spirit your soul and your body can effortlessly withstand the pressures the lusts and the cravings of the flesh you are truly dead to the flesh when you rise to that plane in the spirit where both your spirit soul and body can effortlessly effortlessly take note of the word i told us yesterday um last week that um using willpower to fight the flesh is man's way of seeking divine help it doesn't work that way are you getting me i did give us an example last week that i may not be sleeping around but that is not necessarily a proof that i am free from the spirit of lust are you getting me i can be suffering the urge for lust through freedom is when both the challenge and the urge for it leaves you when it becomes effortless you are truly free are we following now there are many people in the body of christ who have not done certain things but they are struggling that struggle was communicated by the apostle himself in chapter 7 of romans he began to communicate his personal frustration and i told us that that is even more deadly than committing all of the acts of sin or gluttony and all of that praise the lord so if there is food for me to eat and i'm suffering from gluttony lost for food and i refuse to eat because i don't want a bad name that torture is worse than even um eating in itself you see that so god god did not design us into a life of of end that uh, I, I, I wanted to use the word endurance but then in the context of um, struggle that we are struggling and trying to use willpower no that's the way of the flesh there is liberty true liberty that comes when the spirit of the Christ finds expression in us hallelujah where you effortlessly rise beyond the pressures of the body where you can prepare a nice meal and you are about to eat it and the holy ghost says take a fast and at once it becomes effortless the ability to give up that desire for something superior is called spirituality hallelujah it's a position in the spirit and in your christian experience where your craving for food your craving for bodily satisfaction pleasure and fame loses its power and dominion over you at that point you are dead to the flesh number two becoming a spiritual man entails walking in the spirit galatians chapter um, 5 verse 16 the bible says this i say then walk in the spirit and you shall not gratify the desires of the flesh hallelujah what does it mean to walk in the spirit it means to depend on the grace and power that is supplied by the person of the holy spirit within us to walk in the spirit is to depend on the grace and the power that he supplies listen to me brothers and sisters there is a grace and spiritual power that the holy spirit supplies to us and it can keep you it can take you to a point where you become flawless in your christian experience there is such an ability of the spirit and i showed us in jude 24 how that the bible says now unto him who is able to keep you from falling so there is an ability that is supplied by the agency of the spirit that can keep you from falling refuse that theology that um okay we can fall down and then we rise up just expect that one day. no 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 the path of the just is as a shining light 
It's not just a shining light automatically. It's a shining light because at every point, at every point in your life, there is a supply of the grace and the ability of the Spirit. So where, as an ordinary man, naturally, I'm a young man. Are you getting my point? Naturally, I'm a young man. I'm not married. The natural disposition in society is that I should have the normal unusual affinity maybe for ladies or something and then go and sleep around and do this and people say it happens that is the natural state if i depend on my strength i will helplessly be a victim of that kind of life it doesn't matter whether i'm a preacher or not so realizing that i do not have the capacity to help myself i tap into a higher supply of the spirit this is the true revelation of the grace of God. The supply of the power of the spirit. An agency beyond your human strength. So that what you should have been ordinarily subject to, there is grace. This is what the divine life is all about. We have no right to talk about the divine life when we are still under the elements of this life. When you experientially rise beyond certain limits, you prove to men here and now that the divine life is at work in you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Um, we came back from, from Niger State this morning and um, the protocol, they were telling me a few things. They said I, I was sleeping in the car. They said one day they are going to bundle me and go and book a hotel and just throw me there and lock the place to force me to rest because it looks like I don't rest let me tell you I know it's good to rest but for me this scripture has become a reality if that same spirit that raised Christ see when the word of God becomes true it should become flesh and manifest bodily bodily if we all agree that there is a realm where sickness cannot touch you, then that means that there is a plane in the spirit. You see, the trouble is, we teach believers that it is possible, but we do not tell them at which spiritual position that becomes a possibility. It's not a possibility everywhere. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's not a possibility everywhere. How many of us know that the, in Nigeria, there is a level that you get to where you are not just given green passport there are other kinds of passports right there are diplomatic passports that grant you access without struggling here and there now until you get to certain realms if i just teach you that there is such a realm in nigeria and you carry your green passport and start running as though it's a diplomatic passport you'll be embarrassed for nothing and you would think i told a lie so it's not enough to tell believers the possibilities that are in the Bible. Every possibility is activated at a certain spiritual frequency. It's like your radio waves. Are you following me now? As we are seated right now, there are different waves. They are operating at different frequency. If you can tune in to certain frequencies, some things become possible at once. But if you do not have the capacity to tune to that spiritual frequency, it will look as if it is a lie. There is a realm, brothers and sisters, where a man can walk in purity, in reality, without struggle. There is a realm where sickness can no longer find expression in your body. It is not in every realm. So the question is not to tell people the divine life is at work. Hallelujah. You will be sick for nothing. It is to keep eating of that tree of life. Those spiritual capsules that bring rejuvenation to your spirit man. And as that is happening to you, you are climbing a ladder in the spirit. You will get to a point where you will walk experientially in these possibilities. Mm. My goodness. Jesus proved to us that certain things are possible to men. He rose to a dimension where he could walk through walls. That's the dimension we call immortality. Unfortunately, there are many people that teach immortality, but their concept of immortality is inaccurate. Immortality is the resultant effect of consistently eating of the tree of life. When you keep eating of the tree of life, death begins to be swallowed up by a, an activity and an agency of the spirit. And if you do that for long enough, a time will come that, that proverb will be true in your life. Oh, death, where is your sting? There is such a realm. 
but the problem is that our level of spiritual metamorphosis is so slow that our lifetime is too short to bring us into that dimension hallelujah and so if we sustain the capacity in the spirit to accelerate our growth it is true that there is such a realm death is not life i mean eternal life is not life after death the true concept of eternal life is victory over death hallelujah i hope you know that god's original exit from this earth to heaven was not death is that true <laughs> no 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 death was not god's official pattern or pathway to exit man Two men in scripture showed us God's original doorway for men to leave this realm. Two strange men. One was called Enoch, the seventh man after creation. He showed us what perfection in the spirit can be. The second man was Elijah the Tishbite. When the chariots of heaven came, a literal whirlwind that interfaced the spiritual plane and this three-dimensional plane and took a man physically bodily elijah right now is with his body enoch it with his body see that these are possibilities that exist in the spirit but brothers and sisters let me tell you if all we do is to get born again and stop there yet we want the demands that do not exist in our current spiritual plane of existence see there are things we want but those things are only possible when we press through certain realms in the spirit. You see why it is important to press. So certain men of God can tell you for 10 years or 20 years have not had cause to be sick in an area and you look and say it's a lie. No, it depends. They, are, they may be lying truly. Many of them are lying. But there are few that truly experientially in this body see i like you to look at your mortal body this body can change listen to me the spirit and the life that comes through the world creates an effect in this physical body there is corruption in this body the word corrupt means that you are subject to death but there is a level there is a level you can rise in the spirit i am convinced that shortly before jesus comes there are few men that will touch that reality in the spirit it was not just meant for enoch and elijah enoch and elijah are two witnesses they are the two witnesses that will return in the book of revelation because it is appointed unto man the bible says to die once now but not in that context of being battered by accidents and so on and so forth but because they were in the law the dispensation of the law yet they did not taste death there was no salvation for them i hope you know oh yes they couldn't have been are you getting my point they never accepted the lordship of jesus christ and the divine life that comes with that decision yet they crossed through a path in the spirit that escaped the grip of death and the bible says they will return because scriptures cannot be broken so they are the two witnesses that will emerge in revelations but the bible says i show you a mystery not all will sleep mm. i show you it's a mystery it's something you cannot understand until the holy spirit supplies accurate understanding i show you a mystery not everyone is on serious there are people who are pressing and see let me tell you i am convinced that when Christ comes, some people would have touched that realm. Because the Bible tells us that the dead in Christ will rise first. And there are some people who will still be alive. Men who defy death. The Hebrews 11 people. Mm, those who through faith have mastered the art of subduing kingdoms. The Bible says they shut the mouth of lions. That is the true concept of what we call Zoe. We teach a lot about Zoe everybody can squeeze in greek and hebrew words the true concept of zoe is the life of the spirit so planted in your spirit moving through the realm of your faculties and gaining ascendance in your body that you dwell bodily in that glorified form the change that will happen 
at rapture can start now that's what i'm telling you the change that happens at rapture is simply because the life that we have this limitation cannot cross beyond this three-dimensional realm so at, at that blast of the trumpet it's not just a blast for nothing as that trumpet comes it comes with a sound the same sound that was adumbrated in ezekiel 37 and then this our frail body will now hear that word are you getting my point now and so if there are people that are on earth for instance at that time who lost their legs that sound that was prophetically spoken in ezekiel 37 bones will be joined to bones there will be no corruption again and will be translated the believer among other things aside from being an ambassador is supposed to create a picture of the reality of the divine life at work in a man paul calls it the mystery of godliness he said great is the mystery of godliness what is the mystery of godliness that god can dwell in man and manifest himself bodily my goodness my goodness my goodness the divine life at work in you so way the life of god so you can you can hold someone this is normal hand but there is a translation in the spirit on the strength of a realm you occupy in the spirit something happens in your physical body hallelujah My, my, my desire is to change my desire is that this metamorphosis keeps happening until we demonstrate to principalities and powers see that is the realm where men shoot you and the gun cannot come we claim it it's not claiming it's a reward for pressing on with the spirit at that realm you understand the mystery of creation you have captured the mystery of life death has no power over you If you are still afraid of death you have not entered that realm because when you enter that realm you will see death you will see it that this is a spirit that can be tamed but how many of us are willing to contest this is why if the devil finds out that eternally you will make it he will do all within his power to keep you in the realm where everything that happens to natural men can happen to you that is his own effort to keep you from rising to that spiritual position in the carnal realm there is sickness in the carnal realm there is there are all kinds of things most of what we teach and we call new creation realities are realities that will be experienced only in this realm i'm talking about that's really what we have been taught as new creation reality because the confusion in the body and i want to correct it now is that most people have known all what they said should happen when you come in christ the experience of the christ life and the prophetic the the, the prophetic um, proclamation about you walking in the christ life that's what kenyon calls the vital side of redemption and the legal side of redemption we talk a lot about the i've studied the teachings of kenyon very carefully i've read almost all his books john lake touched a bit of this realm let me tell you something you will know when traces of immortality begins to be furnished in your spirit man you will know all of a sudden you will find out that certain things are no longer prevalent brothers and sisters it is at that realm if you do get to that realm no one will need to pray for you for any cause or any family ancestral anything the light that emits from that realm can break through every tribal barrier it is at this state yet many people come and say once you are in christ there's no cause there is there is a plane to which the grip of those ancestral claws can still hold you but when you rise when you truly rise you get to a point where you find out that nothing holds you again look at this look at this my goodness the bible tells us that 
Peter, Peter was in prison. Have you read that scripture? They were when they beheaded James, and I've shared with us why they beheaded James because Peter, James, and John were the pillars of the church, they were the prophetic people that were symbolized as faith, hope, and love. You see that? Uh huh. That the Bible says these three will remain, but the greatest is love. James was beheaded. When James was beheaded, it pleased Herod, it pleased the people and the spirit of the Antichrist. Because I hope you know these were the three that followed Jesus to the Mount of Transfiguration. They saw something about a true spiritual man. It was an information that the remaining disciples did not have. And Satan beheaded James. When he beheaded James, they caught Peter. You see why they were going to kill Peter. And then the church started praying. Another revelation of the power of prayer. When the church started praying, watch what happens. An angel stepped into the prison and brought an atmosphere. And watch this. When he told Peter, stand up. When he told Peter, stand up. The same power that, that killed others and made them helpless still made a man alive. And the Bible says the chains on their own volition. This is the dimension I'm talking about. Where chains by themselves fall. It's not available in every realm. Please hear me. It's not available in every realm. If it's available in every realm, what then is the reward of obedience and pressing into the spirit? This is the realm that the apostle began to speak and said there remained a Sabbath, a rest for the people of God. Although they are the people of God, that was God's original desire for the nation of Israel in Egypt. But the Bible says they could not enter that rest. So that rest, that means that office in the spirit is still available if you can occupy it. He said, there remained a rest for the people of God. And we labor to enter that rest in the spirit. We labor in the spirit to get to that point where we can speak over territories, where the, the frequency of our voice has risen beyond the second heavens, where you can speak and it can rattle the foundations of the spirit. And we will get there. The price is what we are doing. The price is to keep at it. Sowing to the spirit. Building capacity in the spirit. Brothers and sisters, this is why we are doing what we are doing. And if you do not have the revelation, spirituality will bore you. Because it will look like, what, where are we going with all this? What is the reward for pressing? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus Christ. How does the Holy Ghost make men spiritual? Let's, 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 let's discuss this very briefly. The Holy Spirit is the one who is vested with the responsibility of making men truly become spiritual. But how does he do it? What is the dynamics of that spiritual operation? How does it happen? We know that it happens, but how does it happen? How does that transformation, that shift in the spirit happen? The first way he operates is by breaking what the Bible calls the power of sin in your life. Breaking the power of sin over your life. Let me tell you something small about sin. Sin is not necessarily fornication and um, stealing and lying. That's really not sin in its entire scope. Are you getting my point? Sin is an influence that comes as a result of a nature. Sin, the true picture of sin is first a nature is an influence that can come upon man by reason of the presence of a nature at work in him and then it begins to produce certain outworkings like lust fornication and so on and so forth so to try to solve the problem of sin by um, trying to stop stealing 
or trying to stop sleeping around is not an ultimate solution this is the picture of what the bible calls the law that's the part of the law trying to use ordinances and not tapping to the power and the supply of the spirit for help because according to the life of a spiritual man your journey begins and continues and ends consistently with the supply of grace from the spirit at no point in your spiritual experience are you allowed to do anything without of the help of the holy spirit and that's the true concept of grace grace is only grace in your life because of what christ has done and the reward of what christ has done is the presence of the holy spirit to help you and there are two dimensions of grace the first is the only one the body of christ knows favor unmerited favor but there is grace as the supply of power to do power to do not just to receive power to do power to pass through a path that you cannot pass through paul began to lament and god said my grace is sufficient grace is also the name of a spiritual ability that helps men to do things supernaturally it doesn't mean that the fact that is grace it means you don't do anything no there are things you do but the energy that is supplied is not yours The power of sin the power of sin is what many believers must allow the Holy Spirit break in their life everyone say the power of sin the power of sin is what Romans chapter 8 verse 1 calls the law of sin and death the word law there is not law like Old Testament. The word law there is the word operation. The operation of sin and death. Let's go to Romans 8 verse 1. It says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ. See this concept of in Christ, I don't even want to go into that. It's another controversy. Let's leave it for another day. Because our theology of what we call in Christ is not accurate. Believe me. See, if you love God and you truly want to grow, if you listen to what I'm saying, it makes a lot of spiritual sense. It will now begin to give you and say, Ah, I now see the reason why this and that and that and that is. Romans chapter 8 from verse 1. It says, there is therefore now no condemnation. To who? To who? Hold on. Who are the men in Christ? That's my first question. Because the Bible says, if you are in Christ, this law cannot operate in your life again. What does it mean to be in Christ? That's a discussion for another day. But I can tell you the truth. We claim we are in Christ. Yet this law is still at work in us. That means God was saying something we do not understand. I'm in trouble again. To them which are in Christ. Who are those in Christ? Those born again? Those believers? Pastors? Church goers? That's the theology that we, may, we, we must examine. And that was part of the reasons why people like Watchman Nee and the rest were greatly hated in their days. Because they came with ideologies and concepts that rattled what the church had agreed upon. What does it mean to be in Christ? If any man is in Christ, he has become a new creation. In that plane, wherever that in Christ is, and whatever it means, all things have experientially passed. Hmm. The Bible says in Christ there is neither male nor female. Born nor free. There are many things that the Bible tells us in Christ. In Christ. In Christ. Why did it not say well, when Paul started his preaching notice Paul will say Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. 
towards the end of Paul's ministry, he changed and started saying, Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus. There was a revelation Paul saw. Why did he switch it? What was the revelation? Who is Christ? Is it Jesus? Is it the Holy Spirit or both of them? I'm wetting your spiritual appetite. I'm dusting the questions you used to ask that made you grow that you stop asking and stop growing. Many of us, these are the questions we insisted. When you met a preacher and he said, eh, just this is it. You said, Kai, no, I don't exactly agree. And that question, the secret is to keep asking, not to criticize, but to contemplate in the secret place. What meaning these things? The Bible says the prophets kept contemplating, looking forward. They asked questions. They inquired. When you inquire of the Lord, you will find light. You will not just absorb anything. That a teaching has been prevalent does not mean that it sustains the spiritual accuracy. I truly believe with all my heart that if men like Papa Hagen were still alive, they would have brought certain strange dimensions of the spirit to the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Kenneth Hagin and all the great men of God, we cherish them. But do not forget that knowledge stop in it didn't stop increasing at their death are you getting what i'm saying i read one of papa Hagin's books how that he said that um you know handkerchiefs and aprons and he gave a picture from that book like the anointing the only medium that the power of god can flow through is an handkerchief an apron because that's the only one in the bible but today we know better now don't criticize the man he's a man Kenneth Hagin did something to the body of Christ few men have been able to do. Yet, the least among us is still crippled. Paul, in his epistle, will write and say, even this I speak as a man. I have searched as to what the mind of the spirit is about this issue. And it's another spiritual calculus for another day. So I just speak as a man. If Paul were to return back to the earth, he will beg for all the scrolls he wrote and he, he will do major editings of many of the things we have swallowed religiously. <laughs> See some of you looking at me. Edit hey, the Bible, of course. See, there is a difference between the Bible and the Word of God. I hope you know that. Because when the apostles were alive, the word of God is what the Bible says, in the beginning there was the word. Was there Bible in the beginning? Answer me. But the Bible says in John 1 that the word of God began the beginning. Proof number one. Proof number two. In those days, men were not given access to what you call Bible. The writings of Isaiah, the prophets and the Pentateuch was kept in the temple. Like we do in Anglican church, first reading, second reading. When you come, they roll it and you read it and leave it there. They roll it back. Have you seen those, those scrolls? So they open it and they roll it and then they bow down and go and drop it back. Yet, Paul said the word of God is quick and powerful. What was his word of God? Are you seeing that the body of Christ truly needs a spiritual surgery? There is a need for an authentic apostolic and prophetic spirit to sit down. It's going to come with heavy persecution. Let me tell you. So if you want to be available to be used in editing these things, get set for heavy persecution. Because for some people, you are resetting their spiritual life to zero. You really believe that a man will sit down and watch you reset his spiritual life. It's going to be with him. You see, that's what Jesus did. When Jesus came and he started teaching, the scribes hated him. Because they had to lay down their scribehood and become followers of Jesus. And Nicodemus, while they were arguing in the open, Jesus will hate you. Nicodemus just turned and said, but ah, what is all this? And in the night, Nicodemus sneaked and came and said, Master, we know. In other words, in the council, the truth about the matter is we know. We know you are a man sent from God for no man can do these things except. It's amazing. 
when you start walking in this light you will be criticized in the open and admired in the secret oh they will criticize you badly in the open but in the secret men will say what minute these things what mystery sponsors this level of results and audacity that's why you must build capacity in the spirit to be trusted with the mysteries of the kingdom in the days to come many people who call themselves apostles read the bible it was one of the letter to the churches we have tested them that claim they are apostles and found them to be liars a true apostolic spirit is not in title hallelujah a true apostolic spirit is in the ability to carry the mysteries of christ to a generation the mysteries he said let a man account of us as apostles stewards of the mysteries of god the power of sin must be broken over your life for the power of sin to be broken over your life the only condition is your total surrender there is nothing else you can add to it the only condition for the power of sin to be truly broken in your life is surrender not just repentance you know what it means to surrender there are three steps to surrender number one you come to terms with the fact that you cannot help yourself two you come to terms with the fact that it will take another agency higher than you to help yourself three you yield to the ability of that greater supply to help you when that happens you have surrendered we sing a lot of things about surrender surrender is not the willingness to allow someone change you surrender is the ex allowing it happen is surrender so i come to a point in my life where i see that lord if it's just left for me oh this issue of immorality will continue till thy kingdom come if it's just left for me i like money if it's just left for me i like power if it's just left for me i like political positions however i acknowledge that i do not sustain the ability to deliver myself from this body of death paul calls it romans 7 please give us the last two verses romans 7 paul is teaching us how to truly surrender we thought that he was speaking negative it's not negative confession is the pathway to true surrender romans 7 all of me i give you all of me i give you all of me i give you you're still looking for it just go to seven and scroll down last last two verses or three look at what paul is saying about himself let's look at 20 23 look at 23 but i see another law paulo walking in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into what this is an apostle in his full apostolic regalia yet he was crying that there was something that was going on in him how many preachers can cry this today because we are embarrassed at it and we claim like there is no need for any transformation it's not true the best of any man of god in this world right now still needs to keep rising and we must come to a point where we are that humble that when we teach members we are not teaching as those who have arrived it's only a steward we are ushers in the spirit inviting men to join in a pursuit that we should be doing too and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin he said that law is at work in his members like a cancer next verse paul needs help from god and he says oh wretched man that i am in the body of christ today we call it negative confession look at me i can't be wretched no this is not what i'm saying there is a state in the spirit isaiah did the same thing he said woe is me do you think these guys were idiots these were men who were open to spiritual things see this teaching is not to help you criticize people 
but his help is to help you discern the plane from which people are speaking when a man talks you look at the plane and then you know whether to argue or just keep quiet it's like when you are in primary school they teach you that one minus two when they say one minus two your answer is it cannot they mark you but when you get to secondary school they teach you something called number line they dare ask you one minus two you write it cannot you are repeating that class you see that so it is a reality that exists somewhere and when you say it cannot in the spirit don't criticize the person look at the plane in the days to come we will really know those who are in primary school in the spirit secondary school in the spirit fc in the spirit professors in the spirit look at me there are very few pastors that will qualify to be in the higher institutions of the spirit i am convinced that most of the people in the university of the spirit are quiet members that nobody knows these are men that have mastered the art of doing business with the spirit so while we are all making noise and gyrating with suit these men have taught spiritual things who shall deliver me that's what you must ask the first thing is an acknowledgement it's not necessarily to call yourself Rachel but to come to a point where you know that Joshua Selman you cannot help yourself you can stretch your ability to help yourself to its limit see listen to me what I am teaching you right now is what the Bible calls the gospel of grace this is the true picture of grace are you getting my point grace that is initiated by the power of the cross where a man comes to his life and sees your you see your limitation listen when you allow god to help you it does not mean you don't have any responsibility it is that at that point the best of your ability cannot help you so you are that you are relinquishing your ability does not mean you are relinquishing your responsibility are we getting the balance now the true picture of the grace of god lord i have come to a point where i cannot walk in this my human wisdom lord i have come to a point where this issue of 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 um whatever challenge or whatever thing i have come to a point where i need a supply of grace and strength that is beyond that of my human that was what was communicated in that word oh wretched man paul is saying what is this frustration so your prayer can be religious if it's not prayer that is out of a heart of surrender you can pray because it's a spiritual formula you think can help you on its own are you getting my point the state of surrender is the posture that attracts grace to a man's life grace does not just come because you think i need it or jesus died no there is an exact condition for grace to begin to flow in your life that requirement is what the bible calls surrender please hear me i hope you believe what i'm sharing with you what is happening to you right now is what we call liberty in the spirit many of you will walk out of this meeting and you will see that chains have left you not just by jacking up and down and you will not need to tell lies again that i am standing whereas something is wrong supply of the spirit grace grace so you are struggling with drunkenness and a man of god just tells you be born again say it's all right no it's not all right surrender is the requirement to access the door of grace that the bible says come boldly does not mean come with arrogance come realizing the fact that the mercy of jesus christ has created the platform for you to receive of that grace hallelujah and so he supplies that strength when you are surrendered and you come to him and you say lord i'm tired of carnality my prayer life is dead if you do not help i, I try to pray lord you know that within me go to verse 20 let's start from there let's see what paul is saying within me the bible says the spirit is willing but this body that holds the spirit has a law 
that is at work in it. Now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I. Okay, go to 18. There's something that I'm looking for. Can we hurry up? I want us to pray. Look at me. For I know that in me, that is my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. He said, for to will is present with me. Is that not the condition of many Christians? Have you seen people smoke and at the end they tell you honestly, I don't like this. Have you seen people like that? Have you seen even people go to the bed of fornication and a, a lady came to just talk to me, open up and when they finish whatever it is that they did, they had to pray there. They had to pray there. What does that tell you? That means that there is sincerity in their heart and that's a sign that you have met Jesus. Because if you have not met Jesus, that check of the spirit will not even be there. Are you getting what I'm saying, please? So men of God now tell people, you mean you slept with so, so and so person? And the person says, man of God, it's not like I don't love God. You see why a pastor can be sleeping with a lady? It's not like he's not born again. Are you getting what I'm saying? But Paul is saying to will that desire if it is from a human perspective I will never want to do anything bad however there is an influence beyond my will and so I must tap to a higher supply that's what we call grace for to will is present with me but he says how to perform that which is good that's where the ability does not come. So the true picture of what we call today the law is trying to do this second part. Now there is willingness. And you now say I'm using willpower. And there are many ways to use that willpower. You can use willpower. Come. If I'm supposed to hug this lady. Ah! No, 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 no. Why? That's, that's willpower. You see that? So you are feeling that. If I hug this lady right now. You are saying ah! This is carnality. That's not carnality. It's a sign that the true grace of God has not found expression. Bless you. Grace is an ability. I want your mindset about grace to change. Grace is not just speaking over your life and say you can pass. Uh -uh. There are two dimensions. There is a part of grace that does not require any doing on your part. It just requires an acknowledgement. The name of that acknowledgement is surrender. But there is another dimension of grace that empowers you to play your spiritual responsibility. If you get this, then your grace message is accurate and balanced. I plan for us to finish on time today. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. See, God is speaking to us tonight. Enough of struggling enough of struggling there is a fountain of true grace that can take you beyond the grip of the flesh mm. hear me there is a fountain of power supplied by the agency of the spirit that can make men live like gods upon the earth until that becomes a reality you will think everyone talking about it is lying hear me if i used to let me use sorry i keep using these things i use them because i'm speaking apostolically are you getting my point now it's not just to keep hammering our minds but let me use the concept of immorality because that's what is really prevalent assuming before i gave my life to jesus christ i used to sleep around are you getting my point that was normal question do you think if i get born again i will just forget those memories tell me the truth Two, if I used to watch pornography, I mean real watch pornography, and I get born again, do you think that your brain is just daft that those things will reset? Those pictures are still there. What makes them kill you is a power that activates them. That's what is called the power of sin. When the power of sin is broken, memories, pictures, and whatever loses its hold in other words it cannot push you to act out its desires again are you getting what i'm saying now so if i walk outside 
and I see a nude lady, the normal response as a man is to be um, emotionally attracted and want to sleep with her. But that only happens because the power of sin is like fertilizer. It fertilizes anything that comes upon it. Are you getting what I'm saying now? The power of sin is not necessarily sin itself. The power of sin is a demonic agency that gives strength to the life of sin. So if I'm a drunkard, when the power of sin comes, that drunkenness becomes uncontrolled. That's why I can't stop it. Are you getting my point? So it is true that many people who preach and say the solution to man's problem is that the power of sin be broken. But they didn't explain it to us well. They, are con they didn't make sin. They just said sin like stop fornication. Stop this. Sin is a very serious spiritual discussion. There is a power that sponsors it. When that power is broken over your life, the reality of the life of the Christ finds expression. So that you can see a lady that should physically lure you and want you to think some thoughts and you can appreciate her and say, wow, pretty lady, wonderful lady. And someone looks at you and says, is that all? Tell the truth, that's all. That is all. That's all because... See, <laughs> you're laughing. This is a possibility many people have not come into in the body of Christ. So, they even laugh at the possibility. Is it really, really possible? Even in Nigeria, it is possible. Even on campus, it is possible. Hallelujah. Trying to solve the sin problem by religiously running away will not solve. You can, I'm sorry to say it, and please don't think that I'm talking about churches and the rest, but you can drive somebody out of your church for not dressing well. But you won't drive the person from the street for not dressing well. Is that true? You will see the exact thing you were running away from. And your mind will help you remove the remaining part of the clothes. So you see somebody half dressed. I say, I close it your mind. I say, thank you. This is all I want. You have, you have now come into my office. Who is lying to who in the body of Christ? Tap into a higher supply. One day we, a pretty lady was passing and I was looking at her. And one of my brothers looked at me and said, Ah, apostle. And I said, you are covering my view. <laughs> Let me look at... <laughs> you see. Because to the pure, all things are pure. You have come to a point in the spirit where all things are truly pure. When last did you generously appreciate the lady sitting near you? And you went back home and slept soundly. Just said, Kai, you are pretty goddess. Ah, God is at work. This is, this is a gift. And then the power of sin could not prevail in your life. Now the problem is, once you see her, because your mind was designed to snap, the power of sin looks for what to do with that picture. And so he starts searching, what do we do? call her say something and because you are a slave to sin your body will act out the desire sponsored by that power say my dear can we meet in kaduna that's what happened you see that most of these big men they are slaves to sin they just see a lady pass you see you can know how much a man is helpless to sin some of us brothers were like that but god is helping us you can't see any lady and ah, just tap your brother. You have, it's not myself, it's not just to tell yourself to behave. It's to say, Lord, something must be broken tonight. Hallelujah. That power of sin. Broken, 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 broken. Hallelujah. Nine o'clock. When the power of sin is broken over your life, you will experience the same thing. Those of you who have seen people being delivered, right? At least you've seen people being prayed for here. And when you pray for them, after they get up, they tell you, ah, I feel light. I feel something has left me. That's exactly what happens when the power of sin is broken. All of a sudden, you will now see the true you and what you would have done naturally 
and what was sponsored by hell all of a sudden you say i always knew it i knew that i'm not just a womanizer there is something wicked now this is the real me i can now serve god in righteousness now i know that i don't just have you seen people who take beer they go to a beer parlor they take just two bottles and they are drunk that's the power of sin are you getting my point they they no matter what happens they must get there and when they take two bottles then they become victims of it they can sponsor someone else people can take even half crate but they must just go and respond to it how many of you have seen that when you are fasting you want to break that fast with anything even if it's sweet question will sweet satisfy you let's i mean uh what they call it vix if vix lemon plus on a normal day if you come to my house and i give you vix lemon plus on a tray won't you be angry i mean you came and said i'm hungry now you fasted till three o'clock and that that nature is fighting take anything take anything it's not just see let me tell you on a normal day there are days that you didn't eat food but you were not fasting nothing happened that's to tell you that normally you were just busy maybe you went to the office or for those of us working or you had lectures and you just found ah 5 30 and there is a test maybe by six and you still stayed you came back eight o'clock and you didn't even feel anything you drank tea and you said okay, tomorrow let me fast seven o'clock your body is shaking seven one hour after that declaration your body is saying uh -uh. let me round up this series with what i call the keys to experiencing higher dimensions of god's power and glory the keys to experiencing higher dimensions of god's power please take this seriously it will change your life those of us in ministry to change your ministry and it will change everything about you number one prayer and fasting i'm going to go straight to the point and not waste your time isaiah 40 and then luke chapter 4 verse 1 and 2 for time's sake i want us to pray let's see luke chapter 4 at least but write isaiah 40 and you read from verse maybe 27 down talks about they that wait upon the lord what does the bible say will happen he said they shall renew renew their strength they will mount up with wings as what eagles they will run and when humanly speaking they are supposed to be tired there is a higher supply that sustains them they will walk and they will not faint this is a possibility ordinarily when you walk you should be tired when you walk you should faint but when you tap into this supply of the spirit all of a sudden you will see that when men are getting tired you are still on the move there is a spiritual system that sustains continuity this is the secret to a consistent spiritual life so that issue of up and down you pray for eight hours today and then you can't pray for 12 minutes tomorrow something is wrong and Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into where? The wilderness. Next verse, please. Being 40 days tempted of the devil, and in those days he did eat nothing. And when the days were, were finished or were ended, he was hungered. Now, I'm just trying to tell you that after the baptism of jesus he went straight to go and fast and pray please and please i want you to learn this tonight if you want to step into higher levels of grace higher levels of spiritual dimension i read the story of a man who wanted to invoke the devil and see the devil and they gave him a condition in your called real story that he would fast for 11 months and in that 11 months he will not sleep in the afternoon and he will only break in the night if he could satisfy that condition he will invoke the devil and he did when he was six months he was tired one day and he forgot and he slept in the afternoon and he had to start again 
But after 11 months, Lucifer appeared to him. Because that, that fasting for that time is like you are pressing a spiritual code. Suddenly, Lucifer appeared and said, you asked for it. I'm here. So what is the thing? And he started asking him a lot of questions. One year, man, what's his name? I can't remember now. Omar Bajesu or something like that. That's that man. This is what happens in the demonic realm. Right? When you fast and pray, that is when you will see the other dimension of grace I'm talking about. Not just that it is done for you, but your fasting and prayer now brings you to that spiritual alignment. Are you getting my point? Fasting and prayer, I've said it, fasting and prayer does not bring miracles. Fasting and, power and, and prayer does not in itself bring power. Fasting and prayer, as far as I'm concerned, solves one issue, unbelief. It brings your capacity to a point where you can understand and align appropriately so that spiritual things will begin to happen in your life. Verse 14. Let's rush to verse 14. So Jesus went to fast and pray. Not fast and sleep. Not fast and gist. Many of us starve what we call fasting. I'm telling you the truth from God's perspective. is hunger strike. He said, is this not a fast I have commanded? That means there is a kind of fast. You know, we do a lot of religious things and we want people to see. They say, come and eat. And you say, ah, ah, this is my 11th day. I've been fasting. Who cares? Just don't disturb us. If you are fasting, it's between you and God. Must you tell us it's 11 days? Um, well, when I get to the 15th day, I'll start taking water. If you like fast for 1 million days, that's your cup of tea. But I'm telling you that fasting is a personal affair. It's doing something to your spiritual man. Brothers and sisters, if you do not fast, there are some dimensions you may never enter spiritually. Now, verse 14, it says, And Jesus returned after fasting. What happened? He returned in the power. Notice, he was filled with the Holy Ghost, but we did not see the power of the Spirit. But after fasting and praying, the power of the Spirit was at work. You see the difference? He had the presence of the Holy Ghost, but he probably would not do any signs and wonders. So the Bible says it this way, Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus first with the Holy Ghost at the baptism, second with power when he went to fast the place of prayer and fasting is the place where you contact true spiritual power acts chapter 4 verse 31 please let's rush acts 4 31 we saw this in the life of the apostles so even in the new testament fasting and prayer was part of the church let's look up um okay well here just talks about prayer but there's a place where they fasted and prayed he said and when they had prayed what happened the place was shaken it's as much as possible add your to your prayer fasting it's like adding fuel to fire your prayer life will be richer when you fast while they separated themselves and they prayed and fasted, the Holy Ghost spoke to them. Fasting brings you to a point. Prayer and fasting brings you to a point where the voice of the Spirit comes crystal clear upon your spirit man. Crystal clear. The encumbrances that dwell in the realm of the flesh are now swallowed up. Because you see, the flesh is only active when there is food. There is a relationship between food and this realm. And when it crosses its boundary, it empowers the flesh. The place were shaken and they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they spake the word of God with boldness. Fasting gives you boldness. Fasting and prayer gives you boldness. Let me tell you, we have seen this in this house. There are many people who came. If you see somebody who is weak and if you are suffering from inferiority, let me tell you the antidote. Pray. Go and join the prayer band for one month. Stretch in tongues every day and see how the spirit of boldness swallows up fear and timidity. I've seen people who the first time I met, some of them will not even be able to look at you. But after a season of prayer, 
that weight just breaks down because God helps you. Even our little children that you see here, look at the boldness in all of them because of the ministry of prayer. You do Bible study without prayer, forget about boldness. Let me guarantee you, forget about boldness. I was teaching the school of ministry students and I tell them, if you are about starting a ministry, start it first as a prayer meeting, not a Bible study fellowship. I know it looks religious, the word, word, pray. You will never truly pray and forget the word of God. Let me tell you the truth. If you make spiritual contact, eventually you will stop and consider the word. But you can sit down with tea and, and coffee and say, okay, let's consider now the book of Colossians and somebody is just snoring. The pathway to death. And a time will come where once there is no activity of the spirit, the flesh will start coming in. You see, the only one who will share, Benga, we are tired of your face. So, ah, give Lillian flesh. Look at a church that prays. They are men of power. Look at a ministry that prays. Look at a family that prays. There are some, family that, some families that really pray. Thank God for some of our mothers. No matter how tired you are, five o'clock, you're already hearing worship in the parlor. The meaning of that is wake up. And when you were growing up, some of us insulted our parents because we did not understand. Watch this. Today you thank God because there are some histories that will never be associated with your life. Not because you were nice in yourself. Prayer bailed you out. He said, watch and pray that you will not fall into temptation. Brothers, you see the key? Watch and pray. So that you will not be sitting down. Somebody tells you, let's go and visit one of my friends. The moment you are going, police will just put you inside Black Maria and say, let's go. They did stealing around. He said, no, no, I'm just coming out. They say, you go and explain it in the station. Watch and pray. It gives you discernment. How many people have been jailed for doing nothing? Because they could not walk circumspectly. Prayer and fasting. One key that will bring heaven's dimension to operate in your life. There is no exact formula for praying and fasting. But I encourage people generally. It is my personal spiritual growth principle. That your prayer and fasting life should be at least at least once in for a start let's say once in two weeks i fast at least once in a week at least and that's all right you don't need to fast six times in seven days not necessarily if you're on a program that's okay but incorporate it not as one religious thing after you fast for 21 days you die for the remaining part of the year no let it be part of your spiritual growth please just do what i'm telling you even if it is religiously just do it and see what happens to your spirit man hallelujah at least once a week huh you can use the day you are sure you won't cook well or where there's no nice food you fast on Sunday, you are looking for trouble. If God instructs you, fast. Otherwise, you can... And don't just fast the day when you, are, you want to sleep. And then you fast and sleep. And then it just so happens that you woke up and it was 4.30. And then you just prayed a little and still played koinonia message and slept. And you woke up 5 minutes to 6. You started peeling orange, banana and the rest. You didn't fast accurately. You won't maximize the spiritual blessings. Praise the Lord. You fasted and the whole day you were cooking. What you eat in the evening. That's not fast. It's not fast. Number two. Very rich and consistent word study life. You want the glory of God to be multiplied upon your life. You must have a robust rich and consistent word study life rich word study life let me encourage everyone here you can meet media i think they have i listen to the whole bible um every month i may not be able to read it 
Do you know that you can read one book in, in 15 minutes? I mean, you can listen odd on audio. Are you getting my point? The truth is, the probability for you to wake up every morning and do devotionals from 5 to 8 is almost zero. Except you want to become an irresponsible worker in your place of work. If I employ you and you come back by 12 and I ask you what you were doing, you say, I was touching heaven. You are out. You are out. Now, there are many believers. Let me balance this. There are many believers that use spirituality to refuse to be productive. They employed you to come and walk. You prayed from 5 till 11. It is good, but you are not wise. So create a system just the same way you read your book and you study in school. I don't do that. I'm telling you the truth. I don't have that time every day at a particular time to study as much as I want. And so I have all kinds of systems that are put in place. Hallelujah. There are times that I'm traveling and the time to travel is 5 a.m. in the morning. Are, are you getting my point now? You can sit down and miss your flight and tell them <laughs> I'm, I'm a pastor. That's your cup of tea. Well, pastor, buy your jet or buy your, your, your plane or, or trust God to move like Philip. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are times that there are certain things in your life that are time tag. I wake up that and sometimes I wake up maybe 15 minutes to 5. What can you really do in 15 minutes? I'm just bathing and praying in tongues and quickly I'm playing. I have audio Bible. Everyone say audio Bible. It's a big blessing that can transform your life. I'm giving you a secret. I believe that media has audio Bible. It's free. Go and get it. Buy a flash. Buy all of this. Buy a bigger memory card. Remove nonsense from your phone and add direct Bible. Praise the Lord. And you are listening to it. Sometimes try listening to it and sleep. You will find out that while your spirit is sleeping, it's picking the signals of that scripture. How many of you listen to messages and you know while you are sleeping, the message is still playing? You are well aware. Let me tell you, that thing is not little. There is a mighty level of translation happening. Because at that point, your body is sleeping. The biggest problem of your spiritual growth is asleep. And so the Holy Ghost can quickly maximize that opportunity and cover ground before you wake up. I'm, I'm telling you this. Oh yes, I'm telling you this. That's why it is while men sleep that the devil comes to plant tears. Not while men are awake. While men sleep. There is a mystery of sleep. As you sleep, most times, I don't just sleep silent. It doesn't mean that if you have roommates, let me balance it now. You just get a little speaker and just put something and you disturb people. God gave us, he brought technology to help us grow. Get an earphone. A rich word study life. The Bible on the go. The Bible on the go. There are times that all these short, short chapters, Jude, James, you can just combine all of them. Huh? And within an hour, you have listened. Faith comes by hearing. Literally comes by hearing. You can use devotionals. Devotionals. It may not be the ultimate source of your spiritual growth, but please don't trivialize devotionals. It's a good way of starting. There are many ministries that have devotionals. Many ministries. Some of our churches have it. Buy. Humble yourself and, and, and let it direct and guide you. Number three. There are special Bibles that have Bible study plans. Is that true? God has helped a lot of people and they have put different Bible study plans. One year plan, two year plan. You can, you can take advantage of it. Whatever you will do, you must design a systemic way of study consistently. I study as the spirit leads will not help you. It's not even the spirit that is leading to that kind of confusion. So the day you just feel like, you say, okay, where do I study now? You know, let me tell you, this flesh is a dangerous thing. You turn to the book of Matthew, nothing, Jeremiah, Jeremiah 12, what will I now study? You open again Leviticus, 
you know all these kinds of things you open to the gospel you open to revelation you are afraid you close it back and at the end of it you don't study anything constructively you must study and then beyond study you must allow the word of god to grow in you it's not enough just to study you must live by the principles of the word number three okay let me give you a scripture for the second timothy chapter three second timothy chapter three from verse one to seventeen the verse of emphasis is from fourteen to seventeen second timothy chapter three from verse one but specifically from verse fourteen to seventeen you can also back up your word study life with rich Christian materials. Oga Jordan is there. Jordan bookstore is open. There are all kinds of rich books that can help to back you up. Carry 5,000. Carry 10,000. If you can eat food of 10,000 and you cannot buy a spiritual material of 10,000, you are the second man we are talking about. That's carnality. Hallelujah. Number three. Fellowship with the Spirit through intense worship. You want to experience heaven. Fellowship with the Spirit through worship. By worship, I mean employing the agency of music. Listen. Listen. You will never encounter the glory of God if you ignore the place of worship in your life. That's why sometimes you see that they are playing this and well, it's not just that we want to make noise. It's an atmosphere. I preached a message years ago called the law of atmosphere. When you create the atmosphere for the Holy Ghost to come, you will experience his presence mightily. Hallelujah. Worship. My, my phones are full of all kinds of worship songs some i'm just sitting and i just go on youtube the best worship songs and i look for them i download them i convert them to mp3s straight to my phone and i just lie down and sometimes especially those times when there's no light when your eyes cannot see anything you just play that worship song and you are lost you are in another realm hallelujah and all of a sudden, you literally begin to sense the Shekinah presence of God in your room. When you keep doing that, eventually your room becomes an altar. An altar is a place where consistent sacrifice is made. Your room becomes a portal. Hallelujah. If you plan to build, create a section in your room and call it your altar with God, the threshing floor. Hmm some people is the bathroom your toilet and, and trust me it's a good idea for as long as it's building your spiritual life at least nobody will harass you there and you just lock the place and you are lost in worship it's not like you are easing yourself you just need some time for yourself some of us the garage that they are not using you just find one old mattress and throw down there and you lie down sweet spirit i submit to you and you are worshiping and you are just praying in tongues. And I tell you, if you go online, there are all kinds of worship. There, there's jazz worship. Strong, prophetic jazz worship. No words. Your tongues will be the words. There are instrumentations. Like this. Just play. And guys, you can do something like this and package it. Why not? Do something like that to help the body of Christ. No ministry. You are just creative. You are contributing to the body of Christ. And you will be blessed and rewarded for it. Both financially and otherwise. That's an idea God is giving someone. Imagine that you have this that you are hearing. Take it to your room. It says, Oh Lord, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul longs for you. To see your power and your glory as I have seen in the sanctuary. Take your experience of the sanctuary to your secret place. And you're just worshiping. Ah, hello. And you invite your husband, your wife. Let the children sleep in the presence of God. See, if you are married here, don't leave your children behind. 
while you're worshiping drag them the bible said train not discuss train drag them come and put the mattress let them sleep in the glory eli was um samuel was sleeping close to the ark but he still had the voice of god at least sleep but sleep close to the ark some of our little ones are sleeping now they are sleeping in the presence of god let them remain there you don't lose in the presence of god is god helping someone here all of a sudden you find out that there are times you may not have the grace to pray but there is the grace to worship switch from there and you're just singing and sometimes it may just be one song has that happened to you any other song you raise your spirit will reject it because that one song is the communication of what the spirit is doing in your life at that moment it could even just be a phrase ah, elohim any other song will not connect with your spirit ah, and five minutes turns to ten minutes and there is a supply of strength after 10 minutes you thought you would be tired but right now you have broken the barrier 30 minutes you are still worshiping while you're worshiping your body is telling you all kinds of nonsense are you sure you are not busy you know you have lecture ah, Elohim. while that is happening you're just talking and the flesh is the flesh is reacting to the worship keep worshiping keep worshiping that's why people get tired easily in church the flesh is fighting fighting your rise into a realm the secret is to keep that body there keep the body in the glory and it will start changing a time will come like you tame a horse the body will submit to the dealings of the spirit all of a sudden while you're worshiping at a point you will find out scriptures begin to come mm, his majesty has stepped in scriptures all of a sudden god begins to speak to you some of us in the midst of that worship when it gets deep the spirit of prophecy oftentimes initiates the coming of the holy ghost all of a sudden prophecy comes and you begin to prophesy you are just praying in tongues you are in the presence alone with him all of a sudden you will start answering your own questions by yourself another spirit the spirit of christ has taken over you're praying all of a sudden you find out the pain is gone completely gone you're praying all of a sudden you find out that you could not sleep because you saw seven carryovers and you say what have i been doing in school and in that presence and the scripture starts coming fear not i have redeemed you i have called you by name you are mine when you walk through the water i will be with you through the river it will not consume you when you walk through the fire all of a sudden courage is arising you have exams but you've not read anything but in the glory you're worshiping you're a man of God you are preparing for your meeting and there is nothing to do see this is how I prepare for koinonia those who know me especially for the miracle service ah I come and I lie down flat and there's heavy worship well selected selected by spiritual wisdom and I just play it and I increase the volume enough to frustrate my body and I lie down there and as the glory comes all of a sudden visions are open and sometimes i'm seeing the things that will happen in the meeting let me stop there fellowship with the spirit in the place of worship the holy ghost loves singing when you sing to him whether in the spirit or in understanding you attract his presence notice every man of god that moves heavily in the anointing whether he has a good voice or not there is an affinity to music and deep worship. I will follow the lion. I will follow the lamb. I will serve the lion. I will serve the lamb. The last point before we pray. 
my goodness what is this that I'm seeing in the spirit I'm literally smelling a fragrance in the spirit literally literally I'm smelling a fragrance with my physical nostrils when you begin to smell things in the spirit it is called the spirit of discernment there's no time to teach you this but it is a manifestation of the spirit of discernment there are times many of you begin to pray and as you go deep you start smelling things scents in the spirit these were ancient davidic patterns of worship the mysteries of the keys of david spiritual formulas that were used to invoke the presence of god hmm. number four the sacrifice of a pure and a holy life the sacrifice of a pure and a holy life you want to see heavy dimensions of god's power and glory you cannot downplay the place of true holiness colossians chapter 3 verse 2 by sacrifice there are certain things you will even need to cut they may not be wrong but you may have to cut them movies associations there are some things you may have to cut for the excellency of that which you want to gain in the spirit you cannot eat your cake and have it in the spirit believe me okay let me give you two more scriptures first thessalonians 5 22 first thessalonians 5 22 hurry up psalm 24 verse 3 and 4 who shall ascend to the hill of the lord he that has clean hands and a pure heart and then second corinthians 6 verse 7 all these scriptures point towards the fact that a life of purity and holiness has a lot to do with the presence of god resting and remaining upon your life the bible says come out from among them and be ye separate touch not the unclean thing you must create boundaries in your life brothers and sisters do these four things again and again in your life and watch a giant in the spirit arise i don't care what the limitations are now fast and pray without compromise invest quality materials invest in the world invest in quality materials concordances in your uh, uh, bible concordances and so on and so forth take bible at least if you can lay your hands on get rich spiritual materials number three fellowship with the spirit in the place of worship you can buy a keyboard buy a keyboard or buy juice five for life come and give um what's his name timmy i almost said ayo buy five for life and give to me and say to me just play this for me while i record for 30 minutes here is the honorarium for investing your gift in my spiritual growth and you're just playing it and soaking in the spirit we are going to pray we have 10 minutes to pray there's no prayer point we're just going to pray and cry in the spirit hallelujah gaining spiritual stature please everyone participate in this prayer i see people standing outside it's an opportunity to pray hallelujah in the next five minutes we are going to blast in tongues you are going to cry unto god some of you all you will need to do is just to lie down and let this worship just soak into you whatever you have to do you have five minutes go ahead and let's do it oh sing in the spirit Oh, 
Come on, build capacity in the spirit. Build strength in the spirit. We worship with the angels and we cry holy, holy. Say we worship. We cry holy, holy. We worship with the angels, and we cry holy, holy. Shemanadana. Let the power of sin break over our lives in the name of the Lord Jesus. We rise from the grip of the flesh, from the grip of carnality, from the grip of the limitations of the flesh. Come on, press a little more for a few minutes. Lord, ignite a fire in us. Ignite a fire upon our spirits. We tap into the supply of grace. The supply of grace. The supply of grace. We rise beyond the flesh. We rise beyond the grip of the flesh. We are free from the lust of the eyes. We are free from the lust of the flesh. We are free from the pride of life. The affinity for material things dies away from our life. The affinity for this world and all that it has to offer loses its grip upon our life we become spiritual men spiritually minded spiritually minded even in prosperity we are spiritually minded in excellence we are spiritually minded when God blesses us, we are spiritually minded. We have no affinity to blessings. We receive them. We use them. But we are never attached to them. Our attachment, our love, our commitment is to the Lord Most High and the purposes of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything that has corrupted your Christian experience, everything that you have struggled with, in the name of Jesus, this system of the Spirit will lift you above the grip of the flesh in the name of the lord jesus therefore i break the power of sin over your life sin has no dominion over you in the name of jesus christ the power of sin that leads men to fornication the power of sin that leads men to pride the power of sin that leads men to gluttony the power of sin that brings prayerlessness the power of sin 
that brings carelessness in spiritual things i command in the name of jesus christ that that grip that hold of sin is broken over your life now i declare that you are alive unto righteousness you are alive unto true holiness in the name of jesus christ hallelujah i command that by the activity of the holy ghost upon your life let sickness be far from you you rise to a realm where ss can truly now change to aa you rise to a realm where infirmity can no longer dwell in your mortal body you rise in the spirit to a realm where curses and spells and yokes and enchantments can no longer have a grip upon you you rise to a level where there is a limitless supply of wisdom limitless supply of power limitless supply of strength this teaching brings you to a realm where god begins to do business through your hands i pray for you by the anointing of the holy ghost your hands that are lifted may they be instruments of signs and wonders in the name of jesus christ i release the anointing of the holy ghost upon these hands that are lifted from today lay hands on the sick and watch them get healed from today i put fire upon your mouth i command in the name of jesus Makato sekete lekata, mambra teke 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 te, reke teke te, reke boshota, mambra teka, eko toskopa, mambre kete, leko toto peke te, e pratoskota, meke te patata. Power comes upon your life. Power comes upon your life. Power comes upon your life. I administer the supply of the Spirit upon you. I administer the supply of grace. I administer the supply of strength. I administer a new order of miracles, a new order of signs, a new order of wonders, a new order of favor, a new order of the manifestation of the Holy Ghost. Receive grace for the manifestation of the Holy Ghost everywhere you go everywhere you preach begin to see a demonstration of the holy ghost you will pray for men they will be filled with the holy ghost your roommates will be filled with the holy ghost in the name of jesus you become an agency a container of spiritual power you become a bank of spiritual power I invoke this from the heavens let it come upon your life i place the word of god upon your spirit man i stamp your life with the word of god hallelujah the time will come there will not be APU again no more dark no more fc no more nigeria no more politicians no more fighting for oil there will be no, you, there will be free oil on the ground with nobody to take it those who will be around will be too scared running for their lives nobody will mine any oil for anybody can i tell you something a day will come there will be no more koinonia again you will come to this place and find it empty because some of us would have checked out since hallelujah while i was growing up they were very sensible biblical films about heaven and hell that when you watch you sit down and ask yourself and he lifted up his word that means you will have eyes in hell hello your eyes will be alive and active in hell that tells me his senses were working in hell is that true the bible didn't say he lifted up his imagination he lifted up his eyes being in what torment a rich man he could not buy freedom he could not lobby his way he was in torment the bible says he seeth abraham afar off hallelujah and lazarus 
at his bosom hallelujah that was a section where those who had died believing the promise and keeping onto the covenant they were it was a section that they were not allowed to be touched because christ had not risen jesus christ needed to be the firstborn among many brethren nobody would have entered before him are you following me he needed to be the firstborn when he came he was the only begotten son but now he's the first begotten of we the brethren hallelujah next verse so here is the rich he said and he cried and said what that means you can identify people is that true there are people that laugh at us today that will see us one day and say joshua say man and i'll just look i'll say my brother the way things are right now you laughed at us and thought we were wasting our time but there is a gulf that divides us forever never to meet again hallelujah he says have what he was begging abraham you will beg many people when you get to hello so you better don't get there you will call the names of people begging he said he begged abraham he said send lazarus the man who you will kick in the earth today if you have everything in this life and you do not have jesus christ you have nothing are you hearing what i'm saying i don't care what qualification i don't care what material benefits i don't care what you have in this life if you do not have jesus a relationship with the lord jesus christ you have multiplied your destiny by zero the bible says that he may dip what the tip of his finger please look up what kind of suffering will make a drop of water an asset you can go to the dam this night and fetch water police will not arrest you is that true if you go to a filling station they will arrest you water is a free thing in the earth here but the bible says in hell you are buying foil 97 naira you go to hell and ask them how much a drop of water is are you following me this night he said that he may dip the tip of his finger in water the purpose was not to quench thirst the purpose was to cool his tongue that's the mouth that he used to say other people were wasting their time that's the mouth he used to confess his and acknowledge to to, to confess his um his, his oneness with satan and to acknowledge that he does not like god and now that tongue the bible says this tongue has taken people to hell it's like a a wild animal for i am tormented in this flame i know that a lot of musicians have sung and they've taught people that is better to be a king in hell is that not true continue you will find out whether there is any king in hell those people who have not gone to hell see satan is called a deceiver that somebody is dancing in a movie around fire and nothing happens is film trick let me tell you the truth in hell nobody is joking god satan demons other people who are there nobody can help another person and very soon i tell you very soon this age will wrap up listen to me a day will come when christ comes those who are left behind will hear joshua selman preaching oh yes the messages will still be in laptops somebody will hear it you have the opportunity to hear it right now and take your destiny very serious hear me you can choose to believe what i'm saying or not that is irrelevant if i tell you sir that you are not wearing a red shirt does it change the fact that you are wearing a red shirt everybody will call jesus lord one day the problem is for some people it's going to be too late are you hearing what i'm saying this is very very crucial next verse please 
he said but abraham said son remember that in your lifetime not life eternity life that is bounded by limited time in your lifetime receivest thy good things and likewise lazarus evil things but now he is comforted and thou art tormented next verse and beside this between you look at the backdrop media god bless you that's exactly what i want between you between us and you there is a great gulf that is fixed so you can't say this is my tribesman come let me carry you leave the other people no it doesn't matter who you know or who you do not know it says so that they would not pass from hands to you cannot neither can they pass to us that would come from them verse 27 don't forget this is jesus talking about this parable he said then he said so he started praying he said since there is no hope for me please i beg you father that thou wouldest send him to where to where you see the reason why we are serious about family salvation the guy was in hell and he was seen in the earth realm and he was seeing that every member of his family was going to go and join him in hell he said at least look at how the rich man became see the fruit of the spirit walking in him by force in hell only a fool will say in his heart that there is no god next verse please for i have how many brethren five brethren that he may testify unto them that means let him go to hell and come back lest they also come into this place of torment the next verse sir. abraham said they have the law and they have the prophets let them hear let them hear hallelujah this is the rich man this is lazarus hallelujah when they got to hell lazarus was free being comforted the rich man he did not carry one naira he did not carry one certificate he did not carry wife or children he went there alone and the bible says why he cried and lamented he said no they have moses they have the prophets if they will not listen to them it means even if somebody comes they still will not listen are you hearing what i'm saying please follow me as i build tonight bless you sir bless you sir hallelujah the fourth thing i want you to know or the third thing i want you to know for many years listen ha look up i was told something many years ago they said sin is sin everybody will go to the same hell abby as if everybody would just pack them and say this is hell stay there i am going to show you that there are different degrees of punishment in hell not everybody gets everything let me show you there are different degrees let me tell you the truth matthew 11 let's rush matthew 11 you will love jesus with your life after this message matthew 11 i praise god i'm going to heaven can I imagine being in hell matthew 11 verse 20 look at people shouting in hell are you there now listen then began he to upbraid the cities wherein most of his mighty works were done because they repented not they saw mighty works yet they refused to repent next verse sir. he said woe unto thee jesus is speaking again don't forget jesus is speaking i'm showing you the teachings of jesus so that you do not say ah this is a prophet's teaching or this is no he says woe unto thee 
Jorazin, woe unto thee, Bethsaida. He said, for if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. He says, next verse, but I say unto you, it will be more, it will be more, is, is that in your Bible? He said, it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon in that day of judgment. That means your judgment is not the same that Tyre and Sidon is going to have. It will be more tolerable for them on that day than for you. Hell is according to God's justice. And there are people who will be in the worst of the worst of the worst places in hell. If our life, if our hope is just in this life, please listen to me. What you are hearing right now will speak against you on the last day if you do not listen carefully and take action. There are many churches, many pastors who don't take altar call. They take seed call. They take all kinds of calls. But to take altar call, they feel it's old school. They don't take altar call. A great man of God, Reverend Dr. Uma Opai, years ago he died and when he went to heaven, he said one of the things the Lord accused him for was that he was not serious about the salvation and the soul of men. We have taught it here, the number one goal of this ministry, the number one goal is to seek and save the lost. Hallelujah. There is no level of church sophistication that will stop us from giving opportunity for people to give their heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. And I encourage you, if you're a man of God in this place and you are neglecting the salvation of souls, whether they are healed and they are not born again, they are going to hell. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Whether they get married and receive breakthroughs, whether you raise 100 wheelchairs and they are blessed, whether they are delivered from demons, they are not born again, they are not going to heaven. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Are you learning something? All this that I've said, listen, all this that I've said is not even the worst part of the story. Should I tell you the worst part? I'm going to tell you the worst part now. The worst part is that hell is not even the permanent place. Hell is a temporal place. The name given to the permanent place is the lake of fire. Follow me. So all those who are in hell are only doing rehearsals. The reason, let me prove to you, listen. Let me prove this to you and don't laugh about this. Demons are not tormented in hell. Satan is not tormented in hell. The official suffering of the lost will start the day Satan joins them. I hope you know. <laughs> that means those who fell in the Red Sea and are in hell, they are still rehearsing till today. Until Satan and death and hell and Hades are cast into the lake of fire, then the meter will start reading and the gauge is eternity. Some of you used to give tracts before. You have allowed all kinds of misguided revelations to make you feel that the tracts you are giving are not of God. Some of the things written on the tracts are just pure religion. But you can edit it, package it with a kingdom mindset. There are many of you that used to preach to people and talk to people about spiritual things. Now you have become a nice person. Now it's the principles of prosperity. And we leave people. There are many of our family members. If they die today, the painful thing is you are going to see them in hell. So take what I'm saying very seriously. Because there are more people on their way to hell right now than we can ever imagine. The reality of heaven and hell. Hell is not the permanent place of judgment for the lost. Because in hell, only lost souls are tormented. Demons are not tormented in hell. Hallelujah. The final place of judgment of Satan alongside everyone that has come into partnership with him. 
is revelations is, is found in revelations 20 the lake of fire let's look at it quickly revelations 20 i've listened to a lot of irritating evangelical messages i will never allow any man of god to climb my pulpit and teach junk and teach nonsense that will not convict people of sin of righteousness and judgment i don't care how famous the man is there there are many people hear me they say we don't want to offend anybody um, we don't want to you, 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 look you let people just know just just the love dimension that's the only part it's nice don't hurt people they have feelings really great men fathers of faith charles g finney dl moody these were men that preached with power and conviction when you sat in their meetings and you got born again your born again was genuine there was no hope of backsliding that message will remain in your memory one billion will not erase it but right now there are many christians so-called people who get born again and two days later they have left the things of god because the reason why they came to christ was wrong the gospel was incomplete now there are those who all that they teach is they just threaten people and they make people run and come to salvation only in reaction to fear that is another incomplete gospel are you following me now and when he the spirit of truth is come he will convict you of three things number one of righteousness number two of judgment number three of what of sin sorry and number three of judgment our messages don't convict people of sin i'm not talking of condemnation i'm talking of conviction that will compel people to see the need for change right now somebody will go and sleep around drink around a man of god can go and sleep around and come and climb the stage and he's preaching and we preach messages that make people comfortable with sin very comfortable and they say it does not matter hallelujah we like messages that just cover it they say no no don't don't bring anything please this is a deceit from satan if some of you here are going to have churches hear me let me preach it into your spirit before god gives you members if god gives you members and you do not preach the full gospel including salvation from sin let me tell you god will hold you accountable for the lives of those people hallelujah i rather remain unpopular i rather remain unwanted and stand for the truth of god's word than to tell myself i am going to join what people are doing and what is happening and let people keep rejoicing and wearing nice suits but going to hellfire the priority is on the salvation of our soul let's read it revelations 20 from verse 10 and the devil that deceived them was cast where please read it read it is there one to read was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone stop one day this terrorist called satan will be relocated from where he is and he will go to hell oh yes that day will come the lake of fire is part of god's kingdom it was created by god himself for the judgment and the punishment of lucifer he said where the beast and the false prophets and who and who if you are a false prophet and you are hearing me repent this night prophets that use charms just all kinds of garbages because they are looking for money and they are looking for ministry expansion some of you are already happy you are mentoring the lives of these people you want to be like them you are waiting to go around and you to have your own small church and somebody gives you one kind of nonsense It says they shall be tormented when day and night forever 
and ever. Next verse, sir. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heavens fled away, and there was found no place for them. Verse 12. And I saw the dead, whether you are small, whether you are great, it doesn't matter. I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. I'm going to show you something that defies many messages that preachers have been preaching and the books were open and another book was open which is the book of life don't you let any man of god deceive you that there is no book called the book of life the bible tells us there are books and there is the book and it's called the book of life whoever's name is not found there that person is going to hell and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their according to their is it in your bible is it in your bible next verse and the sea gave up the dead all the people that have died from the red sea and so on and so forth the sea will give them up and death and hell delivered the death that were in them uh oh stop 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 listen the bible says death and hell did what they vomited those who were in them so hell is not just a location but here the bible gives hell the characteristic of a spirit and a living thing because it said hell gave up those who were in it is it in your bible i'm going to show you that hell is not just a place and a location but a spirit thank you jesus and they were judged every man according to their works verse 14 and death and hell were cast where this is the second death the second death is where death what you know today to be death and what you know to be hell will be relocated where what is a lake geography students help us please so that there's no confusion this night what is a lake i can't remember what a lake is what is a lake a body of water surrounded by a body of water that's what it's called lake it's a lake of fire it's not just fire around it's not a gutter of fire it's called what a lake Bonds with sulfur. Bonds with brimstone. The last verse 15. And whosoever was not found written into the book of life did what? Join them automatically. Whosoever politician, pastor, apostle, prophet, eloquent emoji, whosoever was not found in the book of life will go to hell please take seriously what i'm saying this is a very very serious message and a wake-up call to the body of christ hallelujah let me show you one more time that death and hell is a spirit revelation 6 verse 7 and 8 this is part one wherever we stop this night revelation 6 and when he had opened the fourth seal there were some seals that were open and you will see the progressions the first thing that happened was that there was a spirit of deception that came upon the body of christ hallelujah and then there were all kinds of death and then there were all kinds of economic disaster and when he had opened the fourth seal i heard the voice of the fourth beast say come and see verse 8 and i looked and i beheld a pale horse and his name that sat on him was what that means death and hell are friends is that in your bible because according to this scripture hell was taking a lift in the same horse with death <laughs> see we are saying it now as if we are playing but this is very serious the bible says he that sat on him was called what 
and hell followed him and power was given to them that means they were living them many of us are just seeing this for the first time for many of us you are shocked i can see it on your face what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul what does it profit you if you accomplish everything in this life and you become the greatest man of God or businessman or greatest whatever what does it profit you if you give birth to hundred children what does it profit you if the marriage comes and you go to hell what does it profit you if the job comes and you go to hell what does it profit you if the healing comes and you go to hell what does it profit you if the ministry explodes and you go to hell hallelujah I've shown you from scripture that hell is real brothers and sisters please listen to me hell is real hell is real believe it the earlier the better the way some of us are living our lives the way many of us are rejecting the truth of God's word there is already danger of hell the way many of our family members are already going there is danger of hell are you passionate about the salvation of your loved ones there is hell there is hell when I speak about heaven then I will now talk to us maybe in part two the various movements right now listen let me go ahead of myself a bit to whet your appetite there have been many let me tell you the strategy the Lord opened my eyes to see it when God started taking people out to heaven and hell to reveal certain things for them it was on account of his desperation and his love for mankind are you hearing me but like he rightly said the rich man or abraham said he said even if they come they will not believe them now when these people started bringing messages great people like mary baxter mary catherine baxter 1976 she had an encounter she went to hell and she went to heaven and she came back with a very balanced very biblical view of hell today we have oh, please listen i want to go ahead of myself just to challenge us we have a lot of people who claim they have gone to hell and have come back with many reasons why they said many people were in hell i read one article one satanic demonic article by somebody who said he went to hell and he listed the name of ev almost every man of God that had lived some of you have read it is that true alongside with those who are alive that God told them they are going to hell that is error from the pit of hell when, when we start the B part I'm going to show you that the realm of the spirit is not heaven the realm of the spirit is an atmosphere there are many planes many people did not reach heaven they were deceived by demons the bible says satan can appear he can translate himself as an angel of light many people saw satan they saw demons they were taken on tourism around planes in the spirit and they came back with diabolic satanic messages that are putting fear in the body of christ i'm making every man i will round up this series with a teaching on assurance of salvation so that no devil will come and turn your head you can know that you know that you know that you are saved are you hearing what i'm saying people have given all kinds of reasons ah we went to hell and we saw so 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 people because 
you laughed at a man of God, you are in hell. No, sir. Uh -uh. The Bible does not teach all those kinds of junks. Because you didn't give offering, you went to hell. What, what kind of rubbish is that? The Bible says, even if an angel comes to preach another gospel, let him be accursed. Even if an angel comes to preach what? Another gospel. That means angels are preaching. Many people are receiving all kinds of satanic messages. Hallelujah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are conditions that take people to hell. I've read all kinds of things. Oh, somebody went to hell because they didn't cover their hair. Other people went to hell because they covered their hair. Oh, wait, wait for you. Oh my God. I have part, part two. Don't miss part two. We will examine the word of God. And so, there are many people who hear these messages now and begin to yoke themselves with all kinds of bondage. And then there are many loose and careless people who hear this kind of message and say, uh -huh, after all, it does not matter. And be dressing like animals and be behaving as if Jesus did not die to bring them into a realm of dignity. All we are going to deal with it. From the rising of the sun right on till it's going down we will sing of the mercies of the lord i will sing of the mercies of the lord with my mouth shall i make it known from the rising of the sun right on till it's going down i will say of the mercies of the lord look at me many people have been granted access to go to hell but there are many many books hear me please there are many books if you have never seen a woman in your life i can leave this phone and tell you this is a woman and you will believe is that true but where you have seen a woman if i tell you this is a beautiful woman you will say no this is speaker is that true many people have been deceived in the body of christ there are all kinds of books circulating. And now, most of these divine revelation books become bestsellers instantly because people buy it. So some people have gotten it as a good opportunity for business. Are you seeing that now? Cheap business. Marketing without tears. Just say I went somewhere. And I saw your brother or somebody say you saw him. Yes, I saw him. He said I should come and tell you. This red t-shirt you are wearing. You will come to hell. Start wearing only white. And now you see people will go ahead and say they said it. As though God left us in the dark about heaven and hell. There is nothing about life after now that was left in the dark. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Bible is a complete compendium of the truth of God's word. Your encounter of heaven or hell or any book you will read should only confirm and add to your confidence about the reality. It should not be the basis. You cannot give your life to Christ because somebody went to hell and came back alone. As good as that is, your salvation is not founded upon the integrity of the word. When you hear another version, you will switch again. Then you hear another version. Then you switch. At the end of it, you are moving up and down and you are confused. You don't know where to belong again. You were eating garlic before. Now you have stopped. You were eating onion. You read and they say part of the things they saw in hell was onion. Now you have stopped. One woman, hear me. Years ago, she brought one diabolic book and she called me. I was there. It's not that they told me. They said the former Pope that was in the book. Oh, 
that the former pope was the antichrist they did some kind of horrible calculations and arrived at 666 praise god the pope that has died though they said he was the antichrist and she looked at me and she was advising me this is my auntie now i think she has changed i've not seen her in years praise the lord but this is what she told me she said my son right now she said she doesn't eat meat again she's practicing for the tribulation she said if they lock her somewhere she was being very emotional it didn't make sense to me because i was planning i had gone through a lot in my life god was just helping me to begin to partake of the blessings of the kingdom and i said what kind of frustrating gospel is this hallelujah many prophets came to our homes and tore our homes into two with all kinds of satanic gospels they just came and said your wife is a witch will you let her take you to hell the man said how can i go to hell madam pack your load out of my house if your finger will take you to hell cut it off if your wife who is not cooking for you will, and you're already i want concubine so you find a scripture even my wife will not stop me your wife may let you down get out of my house many madness is going on in the body of christ because people are perverting truth in the name of heaven and hell let me tell you as you are laughing take seriously what i'm saying hallelujah people sow preservation seeds for their salvation oh yes there is what we call battle seed battle seed you drop seed and they intercede for you to make sure you are still in the faith He is risen from the dead. He is Lord. Light is shining in the darkness. Jesus. He is Lord. Let me talk briefly about the reality of heaven. Let's touch it quickly so that next week we will take on other issues there are many planes in heaven the sky that you look at is not heaven the bible tells us that at least from scripture we see that there are three levels of what we call heaven the first is what you call your atmosphere your atmosphere isaiah 55 verse 9 and 10 your atmosphere isaiah 55 verse 9 and 10 Isaiah 55 verse 9 and 10 hallelujah it says for as the heavens how many heavens did you see S there did you see S after heaven for as what the heavens so there are heavens there's not just a heaven there are heavens but there is what the Bible called the heaven of heavens now listen that was an ancient language to show the superiority of something above others king of kings daughter of daughters sinner of sinners are you getting my point now so heaven higher than the earth so are my ways higher than your ways and you know thoughts my thoughts so you can see that there are different levels of heaven the first level is the one you can see we call it your atmosphere the atmosphere where birds fly around you see clouds that's the first level the second plane of heaven that we know is what you may want to call the outer space the outer space where we have the sun the moon the planetary bodies galaxies genesis 1 verse 14 to 17 confirms to us that this plane exists genesis 1 verse 14 to 17 hallelujah then there is the third heaven now there are other dimensions i will not begin to talk about it there is the spiritual sphere of heaven are you following me now when when daniel was praying the bible says as gabriel was bringing the message what happened the prince of Persia 
the spiritual wickedness that was a plane of heaven where spirits could operate our bible says that the stars fought for deborah are you seeing and showing you biblical confirmations wise men from the east they saw these stars job began to speak about all of these stars zodiac atarus and all of these things this is where all these um what they call them stargazers stargazers and astrologers and necromancers all these people they use these kinds of things and they invoke things in the earth realm from these planes of heaven but there is the third heaven the dwelling place of god write it that's the heaven we are talking about the dwelling place of god is also called paradise second corinthians 12 verse 2 to 4. let's look at it very quickly and then we'll just stop and pray so heaven is the dwelling place of god the heaven of heavens now second corinthians 12 verse 2 to 4. it says i knew a man in christ above 14 years ago whether in the body i cannot tell this is paul speaking or whether out of the body i cannot tell god know it he says such a one was caught up to where caught up to where so you can see in the bible there was something called the third heaven that's the heaven of heavens where god himself dwells psalms 11 verse 4 sheba lakata balakotoso prashta Psalms 11 verse 4. Hallelujah. Can we read it? One to read. The Lord is in where? His holy temple. The Lord's throne is where? So heaven is where the throne of God is. All these things I'm telling you from the Bible. I'm letting the word of God speak. Because this is a very sensitive topic. It says the Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold. His eyelids try. The children of men so his throne heaven is where the throne of god is situated right now right about now heaven is the place where god dwells isaiah 66 verse 1 how are we sure that god dwells in heaven isaiah 66 verse 1 everyone please read one to read the heaven is my throne and the earth so he said the heaven is where my throne the earth my footstool one last scripture revelations 21 i want to show you something revelations 21 one to read and i saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and there was no more sea this was talking about the heaven of god coming down to the earth so he called it a new heaven because people had never seen it with their visible eyes a new heaven a new earth the old one that had seas he wiped it away and he said and there was no more sea hallelujah praise the lord do you believe there is a place called heaven do you believe there are people there right now let me tell you there are people there right now i want to bring you a word of comfort listen for everyone here who has ever lost a bereaved member in christ i want you to rejoice this is where they are right now they are listening to koinonia messages right now i tell you the truth they are standing at the corridors of heaven and they are cheering us up the bible says in hebrews chapter 12 speaks about this cloud of witnesses it says seeing then let's project it wherefore seeing then that we are encompassed with what a cloud of witnesses he said because this great your cousin your mother your father your loved ones you cried and you threw them to the earth but from the moment they stopped breathing they had gone to be with the lord this is the glorious message 
the Bible says comfort one another with these words those who die in Christ have only entered a level of rest the Bible says Paul speaking he said for me to live is Christ I know my grandfather is there he lived his whole life preaching this great gospel till he died and his glorious wife who stood close to him to the last drop of her blood many of your loved ones they are hearing me right now from the corridors of heaven I bring you a word of hope there is nothing called too late in this life if any man dies in Christ you will see them again and there will be a glorious reunion when all is said and done you will see them again we will stand in the golden city in the new Jerusalem and our hopes and all our tears will be no more we will stand with the host of heaven and cry holy is the Lamb. We will worship and adore Him evermore. We will stand in the golden city in the new Jerusalem. All our tears and all our sorrows will be no more I will stand with the host of heaven and cry holy is the lamb I will worship and adore him evermore we'll sing it one more time we will stand in the golden city in the new Jerusalem all our tears and all our sorrows will be no more we will stand with the host of heaven we will stand with the host of heaven and cry holy is the land i will never forget years ago hear me i had a classmate this guy was a sickler. I was in secondary school. And this crisis started and it was so bad. It got to a point where he was in the hospital. A night before he would die. Listen to me. My vice principal called me and he said, let's go and visit him. The whole class, we had prepared to go and visit him the next day. And when we got there, I looked at him. I remember holding his hands they were born triplets only one is alive now I held his hands and I smiled I told him don't worry you will be fine and every time this guy looks at me the next thing he seemed to be distracted with another realm that he was seeing and then he would smile back at me and I was looking at him I was saying ah you know that we are going to come and we'll see you and he laughed and i held his hands little did i know that would be the last time in this earth realm i went back by the next day they called me and they said my precious brother was gone but together with him i will stand in the golden city in the new jerusalem when there is no more accident no sickness no cancer i don't know what took the life of your loved ones i bring you a message of hope if they died in christ they are alive even if they did not die in christ it is hope for you now to take up the the mantle of evangelism and tell yourself i will preach to the uttermost this life is vanity vanity upon vanity i announce to you koinonia marriage compared to your eternal salvation is vanity ministry is vanity every other thing is vanity five minutes without breath in your nostril and you appear in that glorious place or a place of torment five minutes whether in the sick bed 
or whatever it is but will you be crying holy holy is the lord or will you be languishing will you be crying there are many people who are too busy for god right now they are too busy for the things of god they are busy looking for money busy looking for husband busy looking for wife busy looking for open doors in ministry can i tell you something brothers and sisters if our hope is only in this life i announce to you again our hope we are of all men most miserable but there is a glorious message and this is the crux of salvation that any man that dies in christ any man begin to think of all your loved ones that died in christ i want you to know that right from the deathbed there were angels that came to take them you were only mourning a corpse the real person went into a place of glory and splendor where there is no more night yonder place where the lights are shining bright jesus christ will make all things all right in his time he really made me see otherwise it really would be right and he's gonna put all my heart to rest he's gonna put all my heart yes he will put your heart to rest this is a song of prophecy to you he released me and directs me in the city of above no more crying no more night there'll be no weeping on that day darkness rolled away no more sorrow in that city of above no more night no more night in that city no more night no more night in that city no more night yes it will happen the sun will no more give me sunlight by day the moon will no more give me the moonlight by day Jehovah will be my everlasting life. He'll be my glory, my strength, and my sight. The light of the moon will be like the light of the sun. And the light of the sun will shine seven times as bright. When Yahweh binds all the wounds of his world. All the good is inflicted by this world. Hallelujah. I'll sing you one more time. I want you to enter your spirit. Listen. The sun will no more give you sunlight by day. The moon will no more give you moonlight by day. Jehovah will be your everlasting light. Your glory, your strength, and your sight. The light of the moon will be like the light of the sun. And the light of the sun will shine seven times as bright. When Yahweh binds up the wounds of this world, He heals all the bruises inflicted by His world. A day will come the sun will no longer give us light the moon will not give us light the presence of I am himself will light that city the Bible says the light of the moon will be like that of the Sun I tell you this song is very powerful can I sing it one more time the sun will no more give me sunlight by day in that city the moon no more 
come no politician will cause trouble in the world again but it is only those who are in Christ who will appear in heaven hear me I'm still going to make an altar call this is an altar call by revelation right now no more night no more night in that city, no more night, no more night in that city, no more night, no more night in that city. Listen, Adam never knew how old he was because he never saw night. The first night Adam saw was outside the Garden of Eden. I want you to know, brothers and sisters. The life that you are living was a loan that was given to you by God. And the way you live your life in this earth realm will determine your life after here. At the end of Paul's life, he said, I have fought. How did he put it? I have fought the good fight of faith. He said, now daring lies for me a crown. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you. You know the reason why I do all that I do with passion? Because I know one day I will stand before his majesty and he will look at me. He will say, Joshua Selman, I gave you a measure of grace. And he will say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter thou into my rest. Hallelujah. Rise up on your feet, everybody. Listen to me. There are some of you here. Listen. When you started out with God, you used to produce tracts. Some of you, when you started out on Facebook, you used to use it for evangelism. But right now, you have turned it into something else. I want you to return back to the ministry of soul winning. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Do not sit down and look at people this ministry, he and I, started on the wings of evangelism. Pastors never take lightly the issue of turning many to righteousness. The Bible says in Daniel chapter 12 verse 3, it said, And they that be wise shall be like the firmament of the heavens. And they that turn many to righteousness they shall shine as the stars even forevermore. Daniel 12 verse 3. We are going to pray three prayer points very quickly. The first prayer point is a prayer of repentance. This is not whether you are born again or not. You are going to say, Lord, I've been living my life as if I have the master key to my life. But right now, I make up my mind to focus on the things that really matter. Lift your voice and begin to pray. The way many of us have been living our lives. The Bible says the prodigal son spent all he had on riotous living. Lift your voice and pray. Say, Lord, I know that life is a privilege. Life is a privilege. Life is a privilege. Life is a privilege. She ba 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 da 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 ba. Life is a privilege. From today, I live my life as though I would give account of it. 
stop living your life anyhow nobody may see you but let me tell you something you will stand before God there is a place called heaven there is a place called hell there are people there right now hallelujah hallelujah prayer point number two please in the next one minute I like you to pray for all your loved ones that you know you know they are on their way to hell there is no doubt about it lift your voice and say Lord mercy please mercy your father your mother your brothers your sisters lift your voice and pray say Lord I know that the way they are going they are on the highway to hellfire have mercy oh God visit them through dreams through visions through encounters visit them lift your voice and pray for your loved ones say Lord arrest them arrest them lead them to meetings connect them to TV programs he that winneth souls is wise say Lord I take the issue of salvation seriously there are people going to hell there are intellectuals going to hell there are professors on their way to hell there are medical doctors on their way to hell there are many good people very good people but they are on their way to hell there are many kind people there are many of our neighbors classmates hallelujah hallelujah the last prayer point the last prayer point the bible says we will talk about it next week he said examine yourself to see if you are still in the faith can i tell you something i would i would we are going to talk about it next week whether a man can lose his salvation or not let me tell you straight to the point a man can lose his salvation are you hearing what i'm saying but i will tell you the conditions but a man the bible says those who were once in christ who have tasted of the powers of the ages to come if they now turn aside from god how bad is their judgment there is a man in scripture called demas have you read about that man a man called demas that started in the faith but he derailed i'm not talking of backsliding i'm talking of getting out of the faith completely realize hear me my entire life changed the day it dawned on me that there is the all-seeing eyes of God the eyes of the father runs through and fro he's searching the earth he's looking for those who make intercession on behalf of the nation those who will rise up and pray who stand in the gap on behalf of our land who stand in the gap on behalf of our land down on our knees we'll take a stand and there intercede for our land we'll pray for the need of our land the power of darkness release our land will never prevail will never withstand the deep intercession by the people of passion those who will rise up and pray Stand in the gap on behalf of our land. Stand in the gap 
on behalf of our land down on our knees we'll take a stand and fear intercede for our land we'll pray for the needs of our land hallelujah these were songs that we used to sing with power let me tell you those who wrote these songs were not looking for money lord the light of your love is shining in the midst of the darkness shining jesus light of the world shine upon us set us free by the truth you now bring us shine on me shine on me shine jesus shine fill this land with your father's glory place spirit place set our hearts on fire flow river flow flood the nations with grace and mercy send forth your word lord and let there be light listen give me one more minute and we're out i'm going to make an altar call again i don't care whether you have been preaching for 100 years listen if you know that you know that if the trumpet of God sounds this night, right now, you are not going to heaven. Look, let me tell you, don't pretend it. I know you have done evangelism. You may even be praying in tongues. If you know that if the trumpet of God sounds right now, you are not going to, you can fake it. You can fake it. But let me tell you something. Every sign that needs to happen for the coming of Jesus has happened. Right now we are only waiting. The last sign is what is going on now. This gospel of the kingdom. Outside, especially, there are many of you standing. I want you to run right now and come and go on your knees here, everybody. Whoever knows that if Jesus comes now, don't wait for anybody to come. You are the first person. Leave your seat and run. If you are still sitting, go back to your seat, please. We are very serious this night. Come and kneel down here and just begin to talk to the Lord. Forget about anybody who is here. Forget about your friend, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your children. Outside, I want you to run and come. We are out of time. Begin to cry unto God with a passion. With a passion. I give you my soul with a passion if there is no space there is space on the altar you must find space this is your night of salvation there must be space for you don't sit right there as the Holy Ghost is speaking to you you may be a prayer coordinator you may be a pastor. I'm not asking you if you're a pastor. Only for you. One more time. I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I truly live for you. Begin to cry unto God. Those of you kneeling down, start crying unto God. Say, My Father, you died for me. Have mercy on me. Just listen to me. Cry out your heart to God. To honor you with your body, with your mind. Lord, with all my heart. Tonight is
is the night to end that lifestyle. Tonight is the night to end it. All that I have within me, Lord, I give you praise. And all that I adore is in you, is in you. Go to hell. Everybody in this auditorium, join them as we cry. Say, Lord, enough is enough. Those of you kneeling down, say, Lord, I truly come with a broken heart. I'm tired of telling lies. I'm tired of pretending. I don't want to miss heaven. I don't want to spend eternity in hell. Cry out your heart to God. Yes, Lord, I pledge my life. I pledge allegiance. That I will live for you. Relationship will not take me to hell. Immorality will not take me to hell. Drunkenness will not take me to hell. Fashion will not take me to hell. Cry unto the Lord. Secret lives that don't bless God. Now is the time to tell God it's over. You can do things that no man sees. But a day will come. We will stand before the white throne of God. I announce to you what you are hearing this night. Is the message. Don't let it stand against you. God is merciful don't feel condemned he will not condemn you there is always mercy and grace but be convicted enough hallelujah we're out of time let me pray for you there are many of you crying let me tell you these tears are expressions in your spirit some of you have tried and tried but this night jesus the judge of all the earth brings you rest he said come unto me all ye that are weary and heavy laden and i will give you rest rest from your struggles i want you to know you can find true rest you can find true rest all of you that are kneeling down never forget this day for the rest of your life I like you to say Jesus have mercy on me I'm tired of living the life that does not please you I want to live a meaningful life serving you in this life and I want to be with you in heaven Therefore, this night, whatever will stop me from making heaven, take it out of my life. Take it out of my life. I break free from wrong associations. Many of you, when you go back home, break all those pornographic CDs into pieces. Set them on fire and watch it burn scramble those devilish channels 
that keep preparing you to go to hell all those pictures and those satanic sites on facebook all those wrong videos on youtube now is the time to make a decision don't say it does not matter don't say it does not matter go and open new facebook sites and advocate for jesus go and open sites go and begin to talk to your loved ones go and make tracks you don't need to have a ministry you can make it take your five thousand make tracks with it go and drop it in the restaurant the least that you do for the kingdom will be rewarded hallelujah we're out of time let me pray father your word has come expressly i pray i pray that this will not just be an emotional activity i pray spirit of the living god quicken these ones that from today and for the rest of their life they will never go back to satan they will never go back to sin they will never go back to the way of death father i pray that you write their names in the book of life let there never be an occasion that should the trumpet sound oh god that they will not miss rapture may they remain rapturable therefore i pray for you all the wrong friends and associations that keep leading you back to sin and the ways of death i separate you from them forever in the name of jesus christ the lord bless you please rise up follow the ushers they will write your name i will also come not just pastor jake i will be there tomorrow to make sure that we have some time of follow-up i will be there personally with pastor jakes and we're going to be talking to you please follow the ushers they'll just have your details hallelujah celebrate jesus for what he's doing hallelujah five minutes and we're out of here hallelujah please invite all your friends what i'm about to share with you next week is very pivotal we're going to take part two of the reality of heaven and hell hallelujah the reality of heaven and hell part two we'll take it next week and i'll be sharing with you certain personal revelations that god has given me hallelujah if you're worshiping with us for the first time everybody please keep standing we're living now if this is your first time of worshiping with us in koinonia please leave your seat and come everybody appreciate them as they come we love you we celebrate you the lord brought you here by his power don't wait for anybody to confess you are the first person hallelujah keep coming clap for them koinonia god bless you god bless you thank you thank you for coming god bless you god bless you god bless you god bless you there are still more coming young and old god bless you god brought you outside keep coming god bless you thank you hallelujah hallelujah now this is koinonia a meeting put together by eternity network international god bless you keep coming thank you so much we're here every friday exploring the principles of the kingdom i trust god that your life will never be the same hallelujah we want to pray and speak over your life and i want you to receive it right now stretch your hands saints of god as we prophesy we declare in the name of jesus that you will live meaningful kingdom lives here in the earth realm and that you will make heaven thank you mama for coming thank you god bless you thank you for coming thank you everyone for coming we bless you we bless you with the blessings of god we bless you with the blessings of the heavens hallelujah praise the lord father thank you you brought these ones preserve them preserve them and bless them give them a hunger for spiritual things to the glory of your name in the name of jesus please i'd like you to follow the ushers they'll have your details and they'll welcome you more on our behalf god bless you thank you so much appreciate them hallelujah praise the lord please if you do not have this these are our evangelical materials jesus exalted as both lord and christ and there are many other scriptures please give as many people is free you can pick up one with the ushers hallelujah booking for counseling starts mondays and then it ends sunday by 9 p.m so you are booking for counseling please immediately after the grace just wait here and book with the with the protocol 
free bus transport is available after the meeting. Those going to Shika and Congo, please just stand at the projector stand outside. Hallelujah. Please take advantage of our official lines. There are many people complaining that they call us and they call us and we're not picking. Listen, let me tell you the truth. You don't want to know how busy. We just returned from Zamfara today. Hallelujah. In the last one month, I've been traveling almost weekly. Hallelujah. I have not rested. As you see, I have not really taken out time to do any quality rest. So sometimes my phone right now has been ringing. You will see probably up to hundreds of calls. We are not available all the time to be picking calls like that. Take advantage of the protocol lines. Invitations for ministration, invitations for counseling, invitation or to make inquiries for messages. If you call our lines and we don't pick, just send an SMS and be patient. We will respond to you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please don't call me in the night except it's an emergency. I don't do night call. I don't have the luxury for night call. Praise God. Hallelujah. October celebrants, immediately after the cake, please come and stand here. You receive a piece. It's your cake. Hallelujah. It's your cake. Make sure you get it. Hallelujah. All missing items are with the ushers. If your item is missing, please meet the ushers. They will give it to you and then you will be able to get it. This message and all our other messages are available at the media stand for free. You can get it immediately after the service. You can meet them. They will give it to you. Hallelujah. Invite your friends and loved ones to join us on Facebook, on Twitter, and um, our YouTube page. I don't know how well we are on with that page but is available and invite as many you will be here next week in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah lift your hands and bless the Lord for tonight say Lord I thank you for your word thank him for the communion you will never be the same in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ hallelujah. dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless Check our homepage for more of our messages, subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye! Pray! Pray! Pray for your destiny! the face of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.